this video, I'll show you how to set up and manage live streams in YouTube's live control box. Ba -ba -bum. Okay, we're just waiting for a couple of people to join on, and then we're going to be starting in literally a couple of seconds. And then... Did have everything all set up on um, the capture card, and of course, the uh, capture card, OB uh, OBS wanted to play games. Had a nice little video set up, but it is what it is. Can't stop the inevitable, unfortunately, which is a shame. Um, let's just make sure we've got everything in play. And then we are going to be going very, 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 very soon. So welcome everyone that's in the group so far, really do appreciate it. Um, let me just go to control room so I can see who is in chat. Um, not that that wants to play ball at the moment. Let's skip that, let's skip that. And none of those want to play ball. No worries, okay. We'll have to do it the old fashioned way and use the mobile phone. So let's see who we have. Let's see who we've got in the chat so far. Hey, doing, Rob? So who else have we got in the party so far? Let's have a look. Hey, doing, Rob? So who else have we got in the party well, so far? There is a little bit of a lag there, so fair play. We know how that's going to work. Let's make sure we got me sound on so you can hear what I'm saying. And then we'll go on to it. So hopefully everyone has got, or everyone has brought along, or want, who wants to join in has got an airbrush with them or at least something to play with. Now, as we go through this today, I'm gonna to be asked if you have any questions that please do drop down on the, in the, in the chat. Um, far away any questions you've got. If you want to share any of your artwork that you're doing tonight or anything you're doing, or if there's a question you've got and you want to share a picture of what you've done, come and join the Twisted Dice Facebook group. Um, and then in there, you can post on there and I can see exactly what what you're actually up to. And then we can go from there. It helps, it, that, that part will help this, this process very, very well. Um, let's just make sure, so we've got six people in the in the party so far. And then in two seconds, we're about to start. Um, okay. Let's start this off. I will record this, so if we need to, if needs be, I can play this back later on. So. You can go through and just catch up afterwards. So what we're going to do first of all, we're going to go through the airbrushes. So let's change the cameras over. So let's go to
Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. Let me know. <laughs> I did have this all set up on um, an Ogato capture card. I've got a, a proper camcorder set up above that's capturing everything down below, which would have given a better quality picture. Plus I had a really cool intro video that was shown at the beginning, but um, Ogato didn't want to play, with, play ball with YouTube for some reason. So something to have a look at later on. Okay, let's have a look. Sorry, what's that? Has gone from your. I don't know what that means. It sounds gone from your location. Oh no, it's it's back up now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for dropping that free. That's much appreciated. Okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. Thank you. So what I was saying, I do apologise. So, with regards to airbrushes, as you can see, I've got a little collection of airbrushes down below. So with airbrushes, you can have. It doesn't matter what one you go for. So if you're going to be starting out airbrushing from the beginning. I would recommend yourself get yourself a nice cheap airbrush anything in between five to 15 pounds they're not but you can get them really really cheap normally ebay you can probably buy like 15 quid two cheap airbrushes the reason why i say get a cheap airbrush at the beginning airbrushes break very very easily and when you're getting when you're getting used to it you need something that it doesn't matter if you accidentally drop break clog it's just the nature of the beast. As time progresses on uh, and you get a little bit better, a little bit more skilled, that's when you start advancing up to these. Now, these airbrushes I've got, they're about 150, uh, sorry, 100, anywhere between 150, 170, 150, and I think that's like 200 pounds. Um, but like pens, you'll find that you, like I might, I find the Solid Solitaire a really nice airbrush to use. Not for what it does, but the way it handles, I love it, it's quite nice. I love the cap, I love the way the needle's not protected. And as I go through, I'll explain why that, that works better for myself. But you may find that that doesn't work for you and you may find that one better for yourself. You may find the way that grips, no worries. So with airbrushing, if you are gonna be starting off from scratch and you are looking for uh, an airbrush, I would probably suggest um, don't go too cheap on the air compressor itself you want one that's got a tank um, and you want one that's got like a probably a dual what's it called um, piston in it the reason why you need a tank for as the your airbrush in you'll get a lot of condensation building up in the actual tank itself and what will happen without having that tank as that motor is constantly going you'll find in the actual tube itself you will start getting the water building up moisture will start building up in the actual pipe itself and eventually what will happen is as you're airbrushing that water then will start going into the airbrush and as you're spraying you'll start getting spluttering effects and your painting won't be as as good and that'll become a real that can become a real problem for yourself so if you have got a tank what that allows it to do as the mechanics are working inside the compressor over a period of time it will get uh, it will keep it cool. Plus when you go around that level, you normally have like a air trap, a filter in, in the actual thing itself. And what it does, that chaps the moisture, which stops it going up into the pipe itself. As you can see with this one, I've got one where it's actually got a moisture trap on the actual airbrush itself. As you can see, I've got a little bit of moisture has been caught in there as time's gone past. So it has, some moisture has managed to get up through the, through the actual pipe itself. Um, but it has stopped it at that point there. Not only that, I find it, that actually makes it quite nice to actually hold the airbrush itself. So I think that's probably another reason why I like the Solitaire. With that and that, it makes it a nice device to have a nice steady control over the airbrush itself, which is quite handy. Let's see if we've got any comments. Yeah, Patriot, the Patriot 105 is a really good brush. I do like that. Um, Oh, what is really good as well, really good. Now, the next thing I'd probably suggest, well, I would probably say, if you are going to get an airbrush itself, you've got, um, you will have different size needles. You, like with the Sotair, I think it's, you've got ultra fine, fine. I just go for the fine, and which is like a 0 0.3. You can go down to a 0 0.2, um, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, perfect size if you go down smaller the type of paints that we're going to be airbrushing with through for 
the miniatures that we do, the smaller the smaller nozzles will make the paint clog up a lot quicker. So as you're going through the tip of the the, knee, the airbrush itself, the paint will start clogging up, and then that will cause you problems where as you're spraying it will constantly start sputtering stop spraying or you have find you have to pull back harder it becomes a bit of a pain in the bottom so the bigger the the needle kind of the better for the type of stuff that we're going to be doing it doesn't really you don't really need to go that fine however even with that i can go quite fine on the actual needle itself so that's that's one of the things so the type of things we can do with airbrushing we can do the pre-shading so if you we can do we can actually base coat the model itself in a primer so there is a primer video up already if you haven't seen it check it out um if you're new to airbrushing i wouldn't recommend doing that straight away i'd stick to the cans at the beginning using the primer through the airbrush takes takes a little bit of practice you want to get used to the normal airbrushing first before you go down that route otherwise you can cause issues with your airbrush itself so really really important that don't if you're not new to it don't go straight down that route the airbrush itself so you can do all the pre-shading you can get some really nice rich awesome colors from the airbrush onto your model plus if you're doing big things like tanks scenery you can get that nice smooth finish as with you using a brush it's not that easy you'll find you'll get like that horrible streaking effect airbrush is the way to go especially on vehicles and things like that or if you just want to do mass bulk painting you can get really really quick effects using the airbrush which is awesome really really awesome so let me talk you through different types of paint now this is really really crucial and the reason why i say that for um, over the last couple of weeks i've had conversations with a couple of guys in the team where they've gone out and brought the they brought out a thinner and they're using GW paint. So this is not the original type it comes in, but you see you've got different types of thinner for different types of paint. So you've got the Tamiya X20A thinner, and then you've got the Vallejo Air thinner. By thinners, right? By acrylic? By thinners? No, unfortunately not. With the Tamiya thinner, you can only really use the Tamiya thinner with the Tamiya paints. If you use the Tamiya thinner, with the Games Workshop paints or some of the Vallejo paints, you will find that the paint will clog in the airbrush and that will cause a problem in the actual airbrush itself. The airbrush itself will clog, fail, um, it can start going gunky inside, and then what you'll find is you'll have to strip the airbrush back to clear the what you've done with this inside it. So if you're gonna use the if you're gonna use Tamiya paints, you use a Tamiya thinner, really, really important. If you're gonna use Games Workshop paints, Vallejo paints, or even if you're gonna use the scale color, use water. Whoa. That's a bit weird. So all the other all the other types of acrylics just use the normal uh, Vallejo thinner. Really, really important on that one. When you, any type of paint you use, whether it's glaze, inks, always put the thinner into the airbrush first. And what I normally do, now this bit of thinner, put your paint in, mix it up till you get a nice milky consistency. So that's one thing. So before we go any further, just want to go through the, the basics on the airbrush itself and the maintain maintenance of it. As you can see here with the two different with the different airbrushes, as I said before, I've got the Soltair where the needle is exposed. I don't know if you can see that. So there's no protection on that whatsoever. Now with that, if I was to accidentally drop that airbrush and say drop it down that way, that needle will bend very, very, very easy. So you don't really got to be really, really careful when you have the needle exposed. If you're going to go with that route, I would suggest when you're not using it, pull the air needle back, lock it into place, so that when you, if you do actually drop it, you're not going to break the needle. As you go with the other two types. They've got a protection guard, they've got a safety guard on there to stop you. If you do accidentally drop it, you're less likely to bend the needle. And the same there with the evolution. Mind you, that one is just extruding just a little bit there. I have to apologize. Let's just get you back onto the thing.
do apologize. <laughs> OBS and OBS on my Mac. This is where ideally I would have, it would have been better if using that other software because I could have had the other screen up at the same time as well as that. So a bit gutted on that. Right. Welcome everyone that's joined the chat so far. Much appreciated everyone that's joined in. So who have we got? So we've got Ace. We've got Sinister Cloud. Uh, Steve, welcome. David. Uh, David Fox, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, even Sean, thank you very much. Sean, you haven't missed anything much for the first 15 minutes. You can play this back as well. But thank you everyone that's joined so far. Really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the channel. Believe it or not, it really does help us out massively. And if you can help and support us get up to that magical number of 10,000 subs, thank you. Right, cleaning the airbrush itself. Every time you use the airbrush, I would strongly recommend before you finish off on the night, after doing some airbrushing, make sure you clean it out. Now, like magic, I say that with a long stretch. You can't, like, depending on what paints you use, if you're going to use the Blazio, you're going to use the Games Workshop um, paints, I would strongly recommend getting yourself some airbrush cleaner. So after you're finished, just make sure, let's get some, let's get one on the go. I do apologize, this is where it's gonna get a little bit of a, gonna get a little bit of noise. So once you've done your airbrushing, just make sure when you've done it, get yourself a bit of tissue. And what you wanna do is just block up. So just on the end, you're just gonna pinch the end. So then when you pull back on the gun, Tip it away, airbrush outside, but when you're airbrushing inside, make sure your room is ventilated. Some of the stuff, if you're gonna use the Tamiya stuff, there's so many bloody health warnings on these, like it's crazy. Got yourself a proper ventilator. Um, you can buy some really cool spray brews where it will suck out the actual airbrush, the paint itself. So the one I've got, if I pull that up over there, I've got a really nice um, booth that once I'm not using it, it folds nicely in. As you can tell, I'm not sponsored by them. That's why you're not <laughs> I'll put a description of the, the one I've got in there because it's quite handy. It's got a light, everything in there, which is really, really cool. But no, we're not we're not sponsored by them. The I've forgotten where it was now. So when you're spraying through, so let's get a little bit of paint in there so I can demonstrate. So because I'm putting paint into the brush. bit of thinner so this is how I mix it so contrast is a really nice paint to go through the actual airbrush itself it's a fantastic paint even though contrast you can go it's nice smooth the pigments quite thick it goes through the airbrush on its own quite nicely but I would always recommend thinner first blow back mix it up or do it in the cup so thinner so 50% thinner 50% contrast do it in the cup and then just pour the cup into the gun because i've been doing this for so long i kind of got it by eye and that's hopefully over time you'll get you should get the hang of it then once you got it through now obviously we're i'm painting straight down like there so for me you've got to make sure you don't overfill that cup if we was going to paint a model on a stand, you're not really gonna have that effect, but you'll be more painting at that angle there. So you can get away with halfway, three quarters full. So carry on with the clean. Now the process that I will have, I will have one bowl water. I would have a dirty old cup. And I also got a little boost, uh, spray booth to spray the excess paint in. So what I would do, once I've finished painting, so with the contrast paint, I wouldn't put the thinner paint back into the contrast paint itself. If I'd thinned down the Tamiya paint, I would put the thinner, with the paint that's left in the, in, the, in the paintbrush, straight back into the Tamiya paint, it's fine. No worries at all. If I was gonna use a Games Workshop paint, if I was, other than the contrast, 
Um, so like one of the glazes, not they do them anymore. Um, or if I was gonna use a scale color, anything I had left over in the airbrush, provided I hadn't mixed any other colors in with it, I would put that straight back into that bowl or into that pot and it could be reused. Yes, it will be slightly, slightly thinned down, but it ain't gonna matter. Even if you go off later on and use that same paint pot to paint flesh or anything else like that, it ain't gonna affect it. It's gonna be absolutely fine. So no dramas at all. So with that, so going back to the airbrush and cleaning it out. So now I've got paint in there, not gonna use it. So all I'll do, excess, just pour away into there, into the spray booth, just spray the rest of it out into there. Into the, um, well, even if you've got an old cup, you can spray it in there, but you'll get all the fumes coming out. With that, as you spray in, because it's got filter in it, it stops all the fumes coming out. You can see in the airbrush, we've got, you can see all the excess paint in there. With this yogurt pot, what we're gonna do with a very old paintbrush, you want something with a bit of size to it. Now, all I would do, straight in, so the cup's in. I'm just giving it. Now with the old paintbrush, what you can do you can get right in there, get underneath the bristles, bristles, get around. Now, it looks clean, but it's not. If we spray out, it's still got a bit of excess paint in there. So what we want to do, with a bit of airbrush cleaner, in. Sorry, I do apologize if I'm teaching you how to suck eggs on this, but there's a couple of guys in the group that haven't done this. Um, and this is really, really crucial in making sure you get the best out of the brush. As you go back, and what you want is it to be clear. So as you spray out, nice and clear. Now, as time goes on, you'll, like if you're using the, if you're using the uh, Tamiya paints, um, what I would suggest, because you would get yourself some ibuprofen alcohol, 99.9% .9 alcohol. You can buy like a, what, a liter for this for like 9.99 off eBay, not very expensive. Really, really good for cleaning out your airbrush. What I tend to use, I tend to use that more when I'm using the Games Workshop, if, when I'm using like the Games Workshop paints or any of the other colors, I'd use the the airbrush clean the Vallejo one first of all and then just to make sure just give it that extra bit of clean I'll chuck a bit of this into the end and that helps clean the airbrush out as time goes on your airbrush will start clogging up and what you'll find if I can get them off well, let's get some tools so as time goes on you'll get paint building up inside the actual airbrush itself. So if I was to take, so it just chucked my mic everywhere. If I was to take that off, by the way, I hardly take this apart. The process that I'm going through now make, means that I, it's very rare that I have to take this apart to clean down here. Um, but as time goes on, it, you know, it still does happen. As you take it off, just be careful that you don't bend the needle because if you've got an airbrush that with the protector on, it's gonna get bent easily. But if you look into there, it's very thin, and that's where all your paint's gonna build up over time. So with that, you would get yourself, and this is where I had it all, so you'll have something like one of those, a little bit thinner. Now, I did have it all to hand, but like an idiot, it's all disappeared. Now. What I would do with that alcohol, the ibuprofen alcohol, I would then get a older, a smaller, older brush. So this is this is really handy for all your fine detail brushes when they've got all manky and they're no good. I'd pour a bit of alcohol fluid onto there, and then all I would do, put that into there, and then just twist it around inside, and then that will clean out nicely inside there. You can, there is a little uh, device that you can purchase, and I don't know where it's gone. Um, but it, it's, it's designed to stick in there to clean around. When you do it, it'd be something like that, but like on a, on a stick. As you go through, just make sure when you're poking through, 
you don't go too hard when cleaning out that nozzle. If you do, that's very fragile at that end there. So if you poke it through too hard, that will split. And unfortunately on the airbrush, these are normally not very cheap at all. Like that is about 15 to 20 pounds. Depending on where you go, that's again 15, 20 pounds, some places even more expensive. So that's like 40 quid just to replace those. That can become very, very expensive if you accidentally go through too hard. So be really careful. If you, care, if you do what I'm showing you now, you'll very rarely have to clean this out. And this is really, really important. So make it a habit. When you finish airbrushing, you make sure you clean your airbrush out properly. That's so, so crucial. Sorry, um, we'll go back to the conversation chat in a second and just put this back on. And as you see, all I'm doing, putting that back on. You're meant to put them on finger tight. But I just use the old GW clippers, just make it a little bit tighter. And then that's it. Done. If you do struggle, and over a period of time, it, you know, you let's say for instance, you've used um, matte varnish, and you haven't quite cleaned it out as well enough as you thought, or you've got a bit of paint that you've accidentally left overnight, it's kind of clogged in, that's one way of doing it, clean it out. There is an easier way of doing it. And where have you gone? There you are. So this is some airbrush cleaner, uh, Badger do it. Again, not promoting Badger, <laughs> I'm not, we're not endorsed by Badger in the slightest. It just happens to be a really good product that I've got my hands off. But with this, this stuff is really, really cool. All you'll do with this, spray it straight into the, into the actual brush itself. And again, the actual airbrush itself is quite clean, so you're not probably gonna see it bubbling. But what you'll see, if there's paint inside, it will start bubbling up inside. And then with that, all I would do, just pull that needle back and forth without pushing down. So it then starts getting the, the fluid inside the actual chamber. And then just for that little bit extra, give a little blowback. Actually, believe it or not, I don't know if you can see that. Even though I thought it was clean, there's actually paint still in there. So that stuff is really, really strong and stinky as hell. I mean like proper <laughs> stinky, very, very stinky. So with that, all I'll do, get in there, clean that out. Um, that brush, believe it or not, I'd... Um, stopped using it because I'd one night I'd had a few few many to drink, why airbrushing up, uh, some stuff to go to Gibraltar, and I forgot to clean it out, and I could never be asked to, because I had like my solitaires, I couldn't be bothered to take it apart. Only a couple of weeks ago when I got all the Badger stuff, I thought, you know what, I'll give it a try, see how good it is. And it actually bloody cleaned it out really, really well, so I was so impressed with that. It was friggin' awesome, like, so it's some really, really cool, super stuff. So let's see what's going on in chat. What have I missed? Anything? Ace, thank you very much, sir, for that. That's a kind little donation there, sir. Um, what else have we got? So I broke a 0.15 nozzle once. Uh, yeah, the, the 0.15, the 0.1 is, I would say, is very, very thin, very, very thin, and probably more t smaller than you need for what we're doing. Um, what else have we got going on? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Anything else? I think that is. I think I'm up to date with that. Okay. Cool. Right. Let's get on with the next bit. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to put these to one side at the moment. That one's just going to go back into there, and then we're going to go with that one today. Now, with my little airbrush. My little airbrush stand, I've gone cheap and cheerful. Now, if I put you over to here, in my wall, I've just got screws. I don't know if you can see that. There's a big old thing there, but all I've got is some screws just into the wall. So when I'm not using the airbrushes, the airbrushes are up on the wall, safe, so they don't, they're out of the way, they're not gonna get knocked. Again, when you're storing your airbrushes away, I would highly recommend that you make sure you protect your airbrushes especially with mine being so so exposed to the open, you really, you know, it's so easy they're gonna get damaged and you really don't wanna get them damaged at all. That's, that's important. Now the other things, so 
Let's go to the next part before I start getting sidetracked. Let's get a plain bit of paper and we're gonna talk through. So hopefully, so pre-shading is, is one of the features that we can do with the airbrush. Now, I thought I had one that was already up and it's moved. I've had my little girl in there a second ago and she's taken stuff, the little monkey. The idea of pre-shading so if we get this little fella here, you would, so for me with airbrushing, if I'm gonna do like, for instance, we're doing uh, gray nights there, which are black. So this model's just airbrushed black. And then we've just gone up with the highlights in the various different colors, like the grays to make the blacks pop. With this fella, I'd airbrushed him. So I primed him gray, and then I'd done a highlight of white. No, I tell a lie, I primed him Moonfang brown and then done a pre-shade of white and then put the yellow over the top. So that's one feature we can we can use the airbrushes or that's one thing that is very, very commonly used with the airbrush is the pre-shading, which is so, so cool. The other thing you can do with the airbrushing, with airbrushes, you can do the matte varnish. So really cool thing, a real cool trick that a lot of people don't use with the airbrush. Once you've painted your model or every, as you're going through different various layers of your painting, put a very, very thin coat of matte varnish. So I'd probably go 75% airbrush thinner to 25% uh, matte varnish, or even 50% matte varnish to 50% uh, uh, thinner, depending on how I feel and what models I'm doing. And what I do is give that a coat over the, over the model. With my trusty, and I can't believe not many people use this, hairdryer, it's probably one of the best little tools I've got in my kit, whether I'm doing paintbrushing with the airbrush or with the paint, paint by um, brush, it's so cool. It speeds up time like no tomorrow. Want to glaze? Glazing takes forever. This speeds it up. And I kid you not, it's, if you haven't got one, go on Amazon, eBay, five, 15 quid. Doesn't have to be fancy. They're so frigging cool. Like, and of course I've got lots of hair, so <laughs> it serves two purposes. Um, but what it does, three coats, three very thin coats on the model, protect the model. But what it also does, as you're blending, it will actually pull the paints in together. Um, so that with this one, I've done some harsh reds in between. And when I put the matte varnish in, it kind of helps pull that blend in. So it kind of gives it a nice, smoother, crisp look at the end of it. Um, I don't really have it. Hopefully we'll get to a point where I can show you some of those bits because they're so, so cool. Um, if I don't show you tonight, next week or the week after, I will, I will go through those processes because that's such a cool, cool trick that a lot of people don't actually talk about and it's it's a game changer on any painting okay so let's go to the next part and that is now hopefully uh, let me see first of all how many people are actually doing this at home so let's go back into chat let's see if my phone wants to play ball which is about right so let's get back in there and then, come on, up we go. This would have been so much handier if I had the blooming Mac up and running because I can then just go on through it with you on there. Okay, chat, skip. And then let's have a look. And my chat's gone blank. Of course it has. Oh, yeah. Bugger. Okay, cool. Um, I've got no conversation on there at all. It has gone absolutely frigging blank, which is a pain in the hole. Let's go on to that, see if that comes up. Oh, what have we got? Cool. Yep, uh, right, okay, yeah, everything's all starting to come back. Never airbrush, so basics is good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and then what we got, Grant, thank you very much, my friend. That is such an awesome little donation. Thank you, sir. That is friggin' awesome of you, sir. Um, I mean that, that is, I didn't do it for that, but that's that's friggin' awesome. Thank you, it's so kind. Uh, if anyone else has donated and I've missed it, I do apologize, I really do, really do appreciate it, so thank you. Okay, right, let's get down to the next bit. So what we're gonna do, the next part I'm gonna get you to do, now, 
I didn't see whether anyone else is doing this. So if you are doing this at the same time as I'm doing it, drop some comments down. Let me know that you're you're doing this as well. Um, on the Twisted Dice Facebook group, if you want if you want to do this and join in and share what you're doing on there, that'd be really cool. Because then what I can do is I can go back to that group, check what you've done, and then I can say yes or no or any questions you might have. So if you are doing it and you want to put down on there, please do. Okay, let's do this. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to go with what would be a nice colour to try. Mm -mm. Oh, I tell you what, would be a good one. The difference between Tamiya and Games Workshop. So, uh, Tamiya has a really cool property. When you're airbrushing with Tamiya, you can go really, really thin with this and still get a nice effect. So, for instance, let's give this a good shake. So, about to do the airbrush. Tamiya thinner first. Just make sure that comes off. If it doesn't, it's going to be embarrassing. No, cool. It's come off. So, let's get a bit of thinner in there first. A bit thinner, and then we're going to go a little bit of black. Not much. Little blowback. If I said, if you're not comfortable doing it that way, do it in the cup and then just pour it in. Doesn't matter. And then with that, if you are doing this at home, what I want you to do, or if you're going to do this later on, I want you to try to write your name with it. Or even better still, just do thin lines. Now, as you can see with that, you can see you've got the, the camera's not well clear there. You've got the splattering effect, if you can see that. So let's try that again. Now that can be one of two things. Or it could be one of three things. It can either be the pressure's not right. It could be the paint, paint is too thick and the paint is starting to dry up onto the actual nozzle itself. So with this, for instance, because I'm doing thin lines, what I might want to do is just go a little bit more thinner in that. better but not quite let's see if I can get this a little bit thinner now the other reason why I like using an airbrush where it doesn't have the guard on it I can get very very pinpoint on where I'm actually airbrushing if you go down to the next size down you can actually go to a hairline there you go, it's much better. So you can get the lines in very, very neat, very, very small. If you was gonna do a bigger model, so for instance, you're gonna do um, armor or something like that, you're not gonna do that all across the model, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull the airbrush slightly further back and you go go back and forth. If you are going to do, if you are gonna do a bigger model, what I would suggest as you go over, don't, or do that, and just flick the paint at the model. <laughs> this is the problem when you have too, because I'm going too far down, the, the paint is going over the side. If I was doing the airbrush in my hand like so, you're not gonna get that effect. That's only where the brush was too far over. When you're going, doing this style, going back and forth, don't hold it in place too long, otherwise it will start pulling. So going back to this side, if you are doing this back at home, what I want you to try to do, for some reason your chat, the chat's gone again. Um, let's see if that's come up. Oh, there you go, I think we've got chat. No, okay, cool. 
if you're doing the same, what I want you to do is practice doing your name. God, this is hard. <laughs> for doing a down on that. Um, let me just go there. So I just need to get the airbrush at a little bit of an angle. And again, if you're not quite getting that, what I would probably suggest, just get a couple of bits of plain paper and then just practice. By the way, if you don't have, if you don't have Tamiya paint, I, this is just only because I've got this to hand. Try something thinner. So maybe go with the contrast paint. It doesn't matter what color you go with. Contrast, but just make sure you thin it down and then just practice. As I said, with the Tamiya, you can go down really, really thin. You can go more thinner with the Tamiya than you can with other paints, and you still kind of get a nice... See, I've just added more thinner in there. And you've still got a nice... So that's one. Tamiya is really good for pre-shading. Tamiya seems to be the best white to go for an airbrush for to give you that nice strong white. So if you're gonna say do World Eaters, um, what was another good one? World Eaters, Death Guard, um, Lunar Wolves, and as you can see all I'm doing, just praying out all the excess. Now I have seen on, on a couple of other videos in the past that people have used the, the Tamiya thinner to clean out the airbrush. Jesus, they must be made of money. Um, so with that, straighten with the alcohol fluid, just to clean it out. As you can see, I've just used an old airbrush bottle just to keep it with the alcohol and marked it up as well. Just so we don't make that silly mistake of pouring this into the paint because that will strip through your model quite easily. Um, let's go through that. Let's empty that out. As you can see, we've got a lot, of, a lot of paint still cut up in there. Let's just pull that out. This is the only boring part with airbrushing. It's the clean. Okay. So that's that's one that's one little trick try writing with the airbrush. The more practice you get, the more control you're gonna get over with it. So for instance, if we go back to this model here, with the highlighting, see things like that, that, um, I'll tell you what, I've got a better example. Much better example. one okay right so two models that i can probably show you that's two good examples i did have another one but the other one is up in the up in the loft so what we got God, it's been a while since i've had him out but with this one, when I so this is probably back from my early days of airbrushing. With this one, was pretty much all of it was airbrushed. So, for instance, on the head with the white. Now, this was using the Games Workshop white at the time. This is before I was using the Tamiya stuff. But all I've done with that is where I've gone, where I've got my control in, I've managed to get the paint at an angle. So, this is where you're doing things like this, and then the next part I'm going to take you through will help you master hitting certain parts of the model, raise it up. 
So for instance, getting the colors in. So the idea was the arm sits like that. So where I've got the airbrush in, it gives that nice blend in between. Another one, so this is pre-shading. So I've done the center of highlighting and then just gone over with purple. And as you can see with the airbrush, I can then just focus upon the parts that I want highlighted. So that's one, one trick on that. So we're gonna to go to the next part. This is the fun part. If we sort this out. Now, this is a really good part to master the airbrush. Now I've got to figure out how I'm gonna get this a little bit higher up where I can. So what we're gonna do, so the next part in mastering the airbrush and getting those skills to where they need to be, a really good one would be coloring in book, child's coloring in book. All of them with this one, I've just gone on on, you, on the internet, just found a bit of some coloring in stuff to color in. And all we're gonna do is the airbrush, we're gonna practice our skills just by using some coloring in paper, some coloring in books. It's nice and simple. This one, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go with, um, we're gonna have a mixture. So what do we want this guy to be? Let's have a play. Let's go, let's go ultramarines. So we're gonna go, what have we got? Ultramarine blue, and we're gonna go Tesla blue. So just as before, a bit of thinner. We're gonna go contrast, well, any, anything you get, when you do, on the model itself, you always go in light to dark when you pull those colors in. There is another way of doing it. So you can go in dark first of all, do another Zenith highlight over the top of it, and then pull the brighter color in on top. Um, that one's a little bit more time consuming, but you can get some really cool effects. Okay. So with this, I'm gonna pull this up because this is gonna be difficult. Doing, using the current in book is going to help you get in within the lines. When you're, oh, I tell you, I'll come back to that in a sec because that would be crucial. So what you're going to do with the current in, is you're going to get used to the airbrush and then the overflow. And I'll talk to you about the overflow. So as you go across towards the edge, what you'll notice, keeping the airbrush within the line it's not like using a marker pen or a felt tip. You're always gonna get that overflow. So if you look there, I'll get you on camera, you can just see the overflow of the airbrush itself. So when you get, if you're gonna do like, like Gasgol, I sprayed him up in separate parts to stop that, that overflow. If you're gonna do, say, something like that that's already pre-built, what you'd use is masking tape, blue tack to block off the parts that you don't want getting the oversp overspray on. So when you're doing like small fiddly bits like that, it can be a little bit more trickier if you're doing this from, from new to make sure you don't get the, the like blue, for instance, on the face. Over time, when you get a lot of practice with this, you'll get the hang of it and you'll know where to hit the airbrush. So like now, with this fella, I can just go straight in. I shouldn't really be going blue with this. I don't know if you can just see, but as you go through, as I'm going through, I'm just slightly pulling it back. I can see the model starting to get wet. So I can see the paint coming through. And then what I'll do is I'll push, push back on the airbrush, but just push down and then you'll just get air. And what that will do, that will dry the paint that's then sitting on the model. So going back to this, what we want, I need something to lift this up off because that is gonna drive me crazy. That might be good. Okay. 
Now, can you see, that's what's kind of hidden. As I'm going through, the airbrush itself is starting not to come out. It's starting to clog up. What's happening is, the paint is starting to build up onto the actual end of the needle itself. This is one of the reasons why I like using this type of airbrush with the needle exposed, because it allows me to do one of two things. It allows me to get the cloth on the end. It allows me then to clean the excess paint off nice and easily. The second thing it allows me to do, it allows me to do that pinch effect to give that blowback. What that does then, it remixes the paint back up with the thinner and it just clears the airway. And we're ready to go again. The other thing you can do, if you, as you're painting your model, if you start finding that starting to blotch, starting to do that uh, clogging effect and the paint's not coming out clearly, just pull back on the airbrush on a bit of paper or just away from the, the model you're doing. Just to get, just pull back and just clear the paint out of the chamber, so any of the dried stuff in there. Just pull it back hard, just to clear some of that out. And then we can go back in and carry on. Now, if you, as you notice that I'm going past, I'm not going, I'm not going back onto the same part all over. If you do that, so I'm going to use this. Oh. <laughs> when you're airbrushing, you won't be flinging your airbrush <laughs> like that. Oh, what a tip. Great bit of entertainment, eh? So let's do with this. So if, if I keep on that same part too long, let's get it in there. So if I'm keeping it in there. Can you see the way the paint's reacting? So I've got too much air and you're getting the, sp the spray coming back up. And that is A, because I'm too close. I've got too much air coming out. And not only that, you're starting to get pull the paint starting to pull. So if that was on a model, you're going to get some real uneven parts on the paints. The paint's not going to sit nicely on, on the model itself. It'll start pulling. You'll start getting... Um... I really need an example to show you. So the best way to paint when you're painting. So that's going to be the rough side. So we're going to put this guy down the middle. That is going to be the poo side. And that is going to be the good side. Right. Have we got any comments? This is me not being able to see what everyone's saying. Right. What we got? What we got? Uh, no, Blood Angel all the way. Uh, sorry, mate. <laughs> uh, good way to delay miniatures by clogging and add flight. Yes, that's a really good shout. Um, I haven't really, myself, I don't really use a lot of that, the flow improver. I normally find that just doing the way I'm doing it, I don't normally need to. So let's just go back to this part. So this is going to be the shit part. No, I shouldn't swear. So we're going to go in too thick. We're going to stay in the area too. So as you can see, I'm trying to do a big area. I'm doing too too close. So you're getting the rough effects. A bigger area, pull the brush further away from the model. And we're just going to do slight passes. As you probably can see here by the airbrush, I haven't got it. I'm not going all the way back. I've just got it slightly back. Doing in the colouring in books will give you a will give you an idea of how to control your airbrush. So this is going to be one of the tricks. So around again there, not pulling back, not going back too far on the airbrush. That one we're going to go closer. As I say, we're going to do. That's what happens if you go too fast, too close, and you pull back too much. And then what we're going to do there? We're going to have that one going down. Let's go up the side. Okay. Because we're going to a, a darker blue. We don't have to go too in depth, 
too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have to do too much of a deep clean on the airbrush to get the paint out. Because we're still gonna be using blue, we don't have to go too much. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get the majority of it out though, but we're not gonna go too much. So once we've got nothing else there, just to make sure that doesn't clog. Right. Okay, we're getting there. We are getting there. Right, let's do this again. So back in with the fenner. Good old shake. So fenner first, and then we're gonna go straight in. the darker so contra so on your model when you as a, so pretty much a repeat just in case for the people that just joined once we then a highlighted on the model itself we do the lighter parts first so the lighter color first of all and then we go in with the darker color to pull those colors in okay so again bad side first of all so before we start just make sure we got the consistency right So we know roughly where we're going. So a bit of paper, a bit of card. So this is what happens when you go too close. So this is the blending in. Terrible. So have that little bit more control. Pull it back a bit. Not so hard on the airbrush. Now what this will always, always also let you do, because you've got the two different colors, to pull those that blend in, you can just slightly go up into the previous color. Now a beautiful thing with contrast through the airbrush, just like as if you was doing the um, painting. So, what we're going to do, we're going to let that dry. This is a game where the hairdryer comes in handy. What you want to do when you're going to go a little bit darker in, you want to make sure the paint's dry first before you go straight in with the next layer. And then just go... Now, when you're painting on when you're painting on paper, the downside with this is the paint is going to go because you're putting down water onto the onto the onto the paper. It's going to start seeping into the paper itself. So if you go too much onto it, it's going to saturate the paper and it's going to ruin the picture. But it's cool. You're not painting pictures on on things. This is just get practice, so it doesn't really matter. But all I'm going to try, all I'm trying to say is, the effect you're getting on here will be different as if you're going to be doing it on plastic or on resin. You'll get a much different effect. So even though that doesn't look as crisp there, once you apply that same effect on a model, it'd be look completely different. With the paper, because it's uneven, you've got kind of like um, little pockets in the paper itself. It's not as smooth. Even though it looks smooth, it's not. If that makes sense. So we'll just do again a bit more shadow around the legs. And then I'll tell you how to tidy it up. I'm not going to bother with that side. You kind of get the drift. Drop some comments if you've got any questions or if you're doing this at home again. Um, doing it at home. Of course you're at home. <laughs> uh, any questions? Anything in chat? I know there's a bit of a delay there, so I'll wait a couple of seconds. And then what we're gonna do there. Okay, same thing. Another thing with airbrushing, if you're gonna do like things like shoulder pads or for instance, knee joints there, as you can tell there, I've got, you kind of got like a sphere of light so I don't know if you can see that well on that one this is one of the earliest these are one of the earlier ones I've done on the airbrush you can't really see it there 
but you kind of got the light capturing on there. But one of the things I didn't do back then, I didn't get that curve in the light as it reflects off the actual armor because it's not a flat surface. You kind of got that, that, that curve onto it. So if you look at the can, for instance, probably another good example. If we look at the reflective part, so same as like if we've got the knee there, the leg there, you've got the light in the center and then you've got the darker around the side. So when you're doing your Zenith highlighting, this would be the same, same type of principle. So what we're gonna do there, so really we should have had, let's go a little bit darker there. Darken it up there. To be fair, I thought these colours would come out a little bit nicer on paper, but on the paper they haven't haven't quite come out as sharp as I was hoping. Okay. As you can see, I'm not too close to the paper itself. I don't know if I can get that so you can see how far I'm away. So not too close. Not pulling back too much on the actual airbrush itself. So if I was to go that same flow. So if that's close, that's the type of line I'm gonna get. As you pull further back, it starts spreading out. And that will give you a much smoother effect. Right, so we've got that part done. So next stage, we're just gonna clean this out. And I'm gonna show you how to tidy it up. Now, if you was gonna be doing like, if you was planning on doing artwork using um, comic books or if you can do like skulls on vehicles or stuff like that the other thing what you would do is have templates so for instance with this one i would have two of these printed out one of them was going to be my master the other one i would cut out and then what i'll do is the one where it's cut out i'll stick that over the top so as i'm spraying down it then all that overspray goes onto the 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 one that's cut out and then you'll have a nice cream crisp underneath. Okay, so we've got that. So what I wanna show you next is the idea of masking up. Where have you gone? So this is where, if we were gonna be doing vehicles and we wanna be doing like, say, the wings a different color. Now Marines, if this was a Space Marine itself and you're gonna be doing shoulder pads, you're not gonna do this on every model. You're, you're probably better off actually going with a paintbrush and just pulling out the trims. All I'm trying to show you here is how we get that. that down there now we're gonna have a little bit over there but what we'll do there you are and then we're just gonna pull that across there like so and we're gonna go that across there and again we're just gonna pull out so we want that nice sharp line. Now, I think I still got one of my knights in the cupboard, cupboard so I can actually show you through, take you through one of the processes that we've had in the night on some of the tricks I've done with the airbrush. Okay, so let's have that going around there like so. Oh, last little bit there. Now, the reason why I'm cutting out that bit there, 
but well, I'm not going to worry about the rest about that the, the marine itself. I just want to show you a couple little bits, and then we we'll go from there, and then we'll go. Let's just go. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll do the rest of it and we'll come back. Okay, the benefits of, we're gonna go in with some primer. I just need this to stand out a little bit now. If we was to say like, for instance, we we're doing a, I'll wait that to cut off. If we was gonna do, say something like that, which actually, I might do that actually in a sec. If we was gonna do something like that and then we had painted this all blue, all that overspray been in there, if we was then go, to go over another color there, it, it the, the next color we put on top will have a different effect. So for instance, if we was gonna be going with a yellow, so blue there, yellow there, all the overspray of blue that went onto that part, as we put the yellow onto it, it's gonna turn, where the blue had hit it, it's gonna turn green. If you're doing um, other stronger colors, you're gonna get a dark, a different type of feel to the actual paint itself. So you can have different shades and it's not what you want. So this is where you'd then mask all that off pre-hand. So then when you go back over, that's not gonna come through. Or you'd paint all that highlight, or then have highlight all that up, paint that the color you want, tape all that all off, then pre-shade that up gray again, pre then of highlight, and then go back over the paint. But then something like that, you don't, you wouldn't really need to because you could get in with the airbrush quite nicely. Okay. This part I wouldn't recommend if you are just starting this off. So I'm going to be going in with, I'm going to be going in with the um, primer now. So I said, if you are new to this, I wouldn't recommend it. And this stuff stinks. Normally, I would have a, a mask on or I'll be using the, the ventilator. So let's get the primer in. Be interested to see how this sits on the paper. So we put the first coat down. Gonna let that dry for a sec. With a handy hairdryer. I'm gonna go back over. I should tell you what. That really does hum. If anything, that's probably a bit too thin with the primer. I probably need a little bit more. Not too much. If you have too much primer in to the thinner, you will clog the airbrush up very, very quickly. This stuff dries very, very easily in the airbrush. So let's just make sure, see we've got that white there. Because that hasn't fully dried, if I was to carry on now, start to put another coat on, you see where it's starting to spray that paint out? That's gonna leave, if you, this was your model, that's gonna leave a horrible streaking effect upon your model itself. And you will have that, because that paint then is slightly raised, there's not much you can really do to get rid of it, which is a real pain in the butt. But there are, what you can do is get a bit of thinner, uh, get a little bit of uh, cotton bud, and you can just rub it down. But let's face it, you don't want to take that chance. Let's not get into that realm of taking that risk, because as soon as you get into that risk, that area is, you've got a risk of stripping paint, and we don't want to, don't want to go all there. I've done a, a demon prints before and where I've got into that stage, gone in with the thinner, cleaned it off with the thinner and <laughs> gone through to the actual metal. And I'll tell you what, that friggin' demon prints ended up the garden. And you spend like half a day doing that and then that happens. Right, let's just clean that out a bit more. As you can see, I'm just going in straight in with the actual alcohol fluid. <clears throat> alcohol is a lot cheaper the only downside with alcohol, because it is 99.9% .9 alcohol, I'm now doing a great mist of this in the air. So alcohol, getting into your lungs, into your bloodstream, guess what, you're gonna get drunk. <laughs> I don't think it's good for your lungs neither. I 
I think it's bloody bad. Um, what have we got? Anything else? So what have we got in comments? So 2020, uh, nothing else. I don't think we've got any other comments. I said I never airbrush. Going a bit crazy. Brought it though, might be. Yep, okay. Uh, use the shoot Vallejo surface primer straight up without thinning it. Oh, really? Um, I found using the primer, what I found using the primer straight out of the bottle, it, the airbrush itself doesn't last very long. It clogs very quickly uh, and it's just a real friggin' nightmare. Okay, that should be good. So let's do a little bit of cleaning. Clean this back. Uh, this is where we're now gonna go in with the, we're gonna go in with the Tamiya. We're gonna go 50 50. What we're gonna do, let's check my old five flower. Right, so it's not quite dry there yet. Do apologize if you've got the uh, the sound of the um, hairbrush going through your ears. Right, here we go, so next part. So with the Tamiya, we're just gonna then do a pre-shade. She also means the white shoulder pads or the yellow? Yellow trims. Depends, it depends on what, um, tell, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this white. And then all we're gonna do then, so having that darker gray there, I'm just gonna do highlighting up of the white up to the areas we want. Now I've put in the paint down, and then all I'm gonna do then is just push the, the needle front forward and then let the air out through the needle. But because the, if you look at my hand, because the needles push forward and down, it's not letting no paint out. If I slightly pull it back, we'll start getting the paint coming through. As you see there, I've got a nice thin line. But we don't want thin lines here. We want it a little bit bigger. So to get a nice smooth blend on your model in between transitions, you want to go further apart. For the harsher lines, you want to go close. Okay, that's probably a little bit too thin there. Okay, where I've let that paint just sit on there a little bit too much. You just can see just a little bit there. So just to tidy it up, we're just gonna go a little bit further back. And we're just gonna pull the paint to there slightly and we're just gonna feather that in. And when I mean by feathering, all we're gonna do is just literally just pull it back, but not so much, not so hard. So like for a harsh line, if I want to pull a harsh line in there now, just go in, closer. Down. Right. I think that is it there. So excess paint straight back in the pot. Great way of not wasting paint. Uh, good tip is don't put too much into your airbrush at the beginning. You won't believe how much paint you waste that way. So to clear off that gunk off the airbrush first of all, so there's no point putting thinner in at the moment. You're just gonna be wasting loads and loads of thinner just trying to clear that excess paint. So all we're gonna do, straighten the old water Look at me, a common water, water. And we're just gonna clear the excess paint out with an old brush. Let's get as much of it out of the cup as we possibly can. And then let's get that out. So 
so just the old tissue first of all i'm not so i've got put no cleaning fluid in there just yet all i'm using is just water and an old bit of tissue now the tissue itself is the it's the type of stuff you'd get in the kitchen to like get the grease off the off your food you want one that's not got lots and lots of fibers so if you go toilet paper toilet paper will have like loads of strands that will come off um, another great tip would be like an old dishcloth or something like that I like to use the tissue because then I can just chuck it away. Plus, I keep the missus happy because the missus bloody whinges when I stick dirty old rags in the in the washing machine. Okay, a little bit of a blowback. So I've got all the paint out. As you can see, there's a little bit of paint still in there. Straight into the water. 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 Uh, have we got any comments? Still can't see the comments. This is killing me. Downside of using the phone. So what's everyone think so far? Been helpful, not helpful? Any questions? Okay, right, that's the airbrush clean. Now, this is the cool part. Because we've masked that off, if I pull that back, I believe I ripped the paper. And that's how you get rid of your overflow. So that's simple masking. So really we need a little, we need something now to paint so I can actually show you that, that part in motion. Um, let, what can we do? What can we paint? I can show some more stuff onto it. Um, let me see what I've got to hand. I'll tell you what. We're about to have Empress hands at some point, aren't we? So Empress children even. Um, let's go. Let's get him on a device. Uh, let's get another one. Two seconds. Be right back. And then what have we got lurking around? Got a model here that I converted and never actually had a chance to actually get around to painting. So this would be a really good one because A, it's very, very small, lots and lots of detail, and I can show you some cool tricks on it. What are we doing for time? So we're doing good for time. So what I'm going to go through is with the airbrush, I'm going to show you A, how to do the cloak, how to do the armor, and how to tidy it up once you've done, because you're going to get a lot of overspray. Um, let's go first of all with the primer so with this one i'm going to go in with a darker gray so the primer that we've just been using was more was, was a gray but it was a light gray i want the gray to be a little bit darker so when i do the pre-shading the pre-shade actually stands out so get, now that should be pre-mixed already with thinner Hopefully you heard all that. <laughs> I forgot about the mic. Uh, any questions? A little further up. Oh, sorry. Hopefully you can see that better. So what we're going to do. Now because we're spraying on, we're going grey primer on a grey model. You're not really seeing where that primer goes. Uh, so to rectify that, what we're going to do now, if you're using, if you're going to be using, um, if you're going to be using aerosol can, it doesn't really matter because I'm doing this just so I can show you. I'm just going to go in with the black first of all. Of course, gloves is a handy thing to have. So 
So we're just going to go black primer first of all, just so I can see where the, make sure the primer is going all over the model. By the way, that colour, if you can print off some colouring in books, some child, some kiddies colouring in books, it's a really, really great way to get your, just your eye coordination with the airbrush and get it, and learning where the airbrush will actually fit, where the actual spray will actually go. And as time goes on, you'll get used to it, so you'll know, be like having a pen, you know exactly where your paint's gonna go. Done a paint, um, I remember years ago before I got an, had an airbrush, I was up Warham World and um, this chap had an awesome Necron army that he'd done with the airbrush. And the guy was, I don't know whether he was, he was pulling my chains or what, but the guy said he'd done it all the Necron eyes with the airbrush. As soon as he said that, I was like, sold. I was like moths to a flame. I was like, yep, okay, sign up. I'll have one of them. Thank you very much. Okay, so the black primer, first of all, has allowed me now to see exactly where all the, that I've covered everything with the model itself. So I've got no plastic showing up. So now, with the excess paint, actually I've got white in there, so I don't want to do that. Let's just get rid of the excess. Downside with, a, with the airbrush, you're forever cleaning out the airbrush. And because we have got primer, we don't want to leave it in there. Does that be game over, man? Let's get rid of that excess. If you can, invest in a dust mask. Very, very important. Um, so, as I said, if you're new to the chat, what I normally use is a spray booth, or I've actually got a proper ventilation, but of course today if I had the ventilation mask on, or even the booth, it would be really noisy. And it'd be very, very hard to do this, what I'm doing with you now. Okay, let's just make sure that's all clear. Right, so let's go back in with the gray primer. And then the gray primer now, it's just gonna go over, just make sure. Yep. So again, with the gray primer, I'm not going in close to the model. Now, the reason why I'm going over with a gray primer on the model itself, when I do that Zenith highlighting, the white is gonna make the colors you put on pop. So for instance, cause this one is gonna be, this guy's gonna be red. If I was to do my red on from the Zenith highlighting on the white to the black, the red's gonna go like a really horrible dull red and it's not gonna look nice at all. It's gonna look friggin' mank. Having the gray will help that red pop through so it'll give it a nicer, richer color on the, in the shadow. So straight away we're gonna go. I think I must have been drinking when I made this mix up. As watery as anything. That really is a thin, that is a real thin coat of um, thinner. Sorry, I know it's the last thing you want blaring down your ears is a blooming hairdryer. Okay, so we're just gonna pull that gray up a little bit more because it's a little bit too dark. So I want a little bit more white in there. So gray thinner, let's have that. Make sure we get the right thinner. Give it a little bit of a blowback. 
am I getting paint over me? Okay. Too much thinner. <laughs> so where you can see there, it's starting to speckle. And that's just where the paint mixture is too thick. So I've got too much thinner to, to sorry, too much primer to thinner. So I need a bit more thinner in there. That's better. Cool, right, let's clean that out. Oh. God, that stuff stinks. <laughs> I am missing the booth, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, let's get that out. Do we have any questions in chat? Let's have a look. What have we got? More importantly, is there anyone else doing this at home? Or how many people are actually, how many of you guys and girls are going to take this away and actually do the airbrushing at home? Uh, use the colouring in book at home. I think that would be the better question. Okay, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of the badger. Only because I've gone a little bit too thick with the um, primer. Wow, well, as soon as I put that in there, there's loads of primer in there. Okay, right. I think we're nearly there. Really, next to do this is enough highlighting. Right. So no more questions at the moment. Thank you for all the people that are watching so far. Really do appreciate you guys and girls joining me. Um, it's absolutely friggin' awesome. I'm gonna be honest, I expect about one or two people to join me tonight. So thank you for joining me. Okay, right. I'm not going to worry about so much about the banner itself because that's going to be a gold. And I've got a really nice gold for that as well. Um, but as you can see, with that, with the primer going through there, it's nice and thin, so we're keeping all the details, like the detail on the face, detail in the fang, we're not losing it, which is the main thing. So let's have a quick swig of water. Water. So next up, what we're going to do for the Zenith highlighting, we're going to go in with Tamiya paint. So again, we're going to go thinner. Give the Tamiya a good shake up. And again, straight in. That might be a bit too much. So I'm blowing back in the airbrush itself. You don't have to, you can still remember to use the paint pot. What we're looking for is a milky consistency so it's not too thick. And again, just have a little play on the first of all on the side, just make sure you've got it to where you want it to be. Now, when doing the Zenith highlight in, you want to think about where the light's going down. So this scenario, the light's gonna you're always gonna get the overhead light unless you're in like a dark room and the light's coming up from on the ground. So this guy, the light's coming down. Uh, so the key features for him is the light is he's gonna be facing into the light. So we want all this part here lit. And then on the other side, we're gonna have it coming in from there. So let's go above first of all. 
again, not going too close. So at this point, not going to worry so much about his face because the overspray is going to go, is going to go in his face. So we're not, we can't really stop that. So that part of the chest is going to be dark. As this part here is going to be light. So light across there. This is where the light's going to be hitting. Down on the foot, so we're going to have that light gun we've got his there and then just the bottom part of that gun so what we want is it darker on top lighter at the bottom so when we get to the next stage you're going to see that pop in the shadow again on top so i'm just letting air out of the airbrush now i'm not letting any paint out just so i can dry it Pulling it back a tad now, so I'm getting some paint out. And again on here. So what we're gonna do, the bottom of his arm there, I'm gonna put some light down the bottom. Uh, that's gonna be dark underneath that point there, but here we're gonna have some light. Now, doing the colouring in, but we'll give you that, as I said before, you'll get used to where the spray's going out. So, like, for instance, I know roughly where the paint's coming out. Now, with the airbrush, because I'm going to, with this, I can go the model at an angle. And when I'm spraying up the actual model itself for the pre-shading, if I keep the model at the same angle, and I keep the airbrush at the same angle, it creates all those natural shape, the shadowing. If I was to go like that all over, all in the gaps, you're going to get that white. So keeping it at an angle will allow the natural pre shading on its own. Okay, so we're going to let that dry because we're starting to get that pulling effect there. Um, so, what's that? So, what we got? I use paper to practice my uh, practice. My question is, I have brought a water, no, uh, the trigger, tiger, what type, what brush, what's the difference between that and yours, and would it be able to do the same effects? Yes is the answer. Um, you can do exactly the same effects on there. As Right at the beginning, um, with airbrushes, I've got, I've got loads, I've had loads of different airbrushes over the time. The only reason why I'm using the Sota Solta is because I just I like the way that that feels in my hand, the way it operates. Um, I find the the Chrome, the Badger Chrome brush is a little bit heavier, um, and I don't find, and because the cup's bigger, I find it a little bit difficult or more difficult to get into the finer parts. So as I'm doing it, I find the cup kind of blocks it. With the water, it'll be the same same scenario. You can do exactly what I'm doing now. You'll be able to do with that as well. So it'd be no difference. Do you know what needle size you've got on yours? I th I'm guessing you probably got uh, the for that one will probably be a bigger one, which would be absolutely fine. You don't want to go f you don't want to go thin on the on the needle. With the Tamiya, the Tamiya if you thin that down, you can go with the thinner Tamiya. I'm not going to do it tonight, but I can show you how to do some really really cool flame effects by using various different paints uh, and using a thinner thin needle even with the bigger one i can show you some really really cool effects um, using that uh point that's that's fine that's perfect that's i think i'm using if i remember rightly on the salter on the fine it's the same it's a it's a point three uh, it may even be a point four but 
that's absolutely perfect. You you really don't want to go no thinner at all. I've watched in the part in, when I first started. I watched so many different YouTube uh, YouTube videos, and I remember one guy going on and goes, "No, nah, you want to go really thin. You want to go point one, point two. And you know, like an idiot, I went in, brought brought the point two, and every five seconds the paintbrush is clogging up, um, getting frustrated, it's getting annoying, it's getting angry, and and that's that's the problem. So. I suppose thinking about that, um, a really good tip for yourself. If you are finding that you're airbrushing and the paint is starting to clog, don't persist, don't carry on persisting to try and get that paint through. The paint that you've got in the cup, put into an empty yogurt pot or something like that. Just pour it into a yogurt pot. Clean the airbrush out. Make sure you get the thinner the the alcohol in there. Clean it all out. Clean around the needle. Make sure you've got all that excess paint off. If you carry on persisting or trying to do the blowback you're doing yourself no favors all you're going to do is wind yourself up you're going to ruin your model so just take that just take a chill for five minutes clean the airbrush out make sure you get in there clean it all out pour that excess paint back into your cup and go go again what i'd probably suggest if it is starting to clog up you've probably got too much paint to thinner in there so maybe just add a little bit more thinner into it just to thin it down just a tad and you'll be fine like two seconds let me just give the dog some water here you go buddy do you want a drink Right, make sure I do my uh, responsible duties. Make sure the little pooch has got some water. Um, right, so let's get the airbrush again. So now that's, now that's dry, we can just go back in. So because we're starting back up again with the brush being sat on the side, all I'm gonna do is just clean that nip off, the nib off. Give a little bit of blowback just to re-mix the paint back up. If you leave it, the paint will start separating away from the thinner. Not much, but it, w it can do. Cool. Just make sure that's where we want to be. Okay, if anything, that's probably a bit too thin now. When you get those effects, we can see that spray going over. Again, it's over because I've got, now I always keep my my um, pressure at, what have I got it on out now actually? So I'm actually sitting on higher than I normally go. I don't know why I'm not sat that high. Okay, so normally we run about 22, 24 PSI. Because you have it too, if you have the air coming out too fast, it's gonna push the paint over too much anyway. I don't know why I set it too high for. I can't remember what I was doing. Let's go again. It's better. Can't even blame the little girl for that one. There you go, cool. So it's starting to get a little bit of a paint dry up there. Just gonna go. Add a little bit more tamia into that just need that thicker just a tad but gotta be careful i don't go too much and make it too watery okay I don't think probably gone a bit too thick. It's fine though. OK. 
Okay, right. Now sticking the airbrush at an angle, so the model at an angle. You see, I'm just going, I'm just spraying to the side. So I'm just hitting that side of the, the foot. And because it's at an angle, the spray is not going to go over. Same thing on the knee pad. We're just going to go at an angle. Done, so still leaving the shade on the side. I think that is... That is just where we want to be. Um, okay, right. God, that stuff stinks. Right, let's just get some. Let's just clear this out. Now, in that process, the paint was actually starting to clog up a little bit in the brush so where I had it sat on the side the paint has started to dry which is a bit of a pain but we're free that's the main part hopefully you can see what the pre-shade looks like so far um, on a bigger model the pre-shade is very very important especially on rhinos land raiders buildings that pre-shade is just so, so, can make the model look so awesome. Plus it will save you so much, so much time. So have we got any questions in the chat? Be interested as well, if anyone's got, if anyone is doing any of this at home or does any of this later on and has a little practice, drop some pictures on the Twisted Dice pay, in, the, in the group. Um, share us what you're doing. Be interesting to see what I've done so far has helped might watch this and think, what the, f what the hell is he talking about? We still got Sean in the party. So I know Sean was, uh, Sean's taken up the airbrush for the first time and he's starting to get used to it. And unfortunately he dropped me a message earlier on saying he dropped the, damaged his needle. All crucial part. All right, so another thing what I'm doing to clear it out, I'm just pulling that needle back and forth, just making sure there's no paint traps in this part here. And as you can see, pulling that back, it's just got another bit of paint just in there. Let's pull that away. Nope, I think Sean is gone not with us anymore. All right. Let's pull that over to there. Okay, so what should we do for the reds? A good little tip for choosing the reds would pick two that go with each other. So let me just put that there for a second. Let's choose my reds. So let's go that one. Um, let's choose So let's do this up the same colors that I would normally do my models up. Um, so the two reds that I'm gonna be using now, let's get my mic back on. So the two reds I'm gonna use now, uh, one of my favorite red, most favorite reds out of all the paint range, and that's the Vallejo Red 71-102. Really awesome, rich cherry red. Love this red, it's so friggin' awesome. And then just as for the highlight, I'm gonna be going in with the Mephiston Red. Now to add a little bit more color to that, we're gonna add a little bit of a uh, little bit of ink to it. And where is my red ink gone? Let's get that. Uh, where are you? It's here somewhere. There you are. Okay. So just make that paint more vibrant. A little drop of ink into the into the paint itself does make that paint stand out a lot more. You don't have to use you don't have to use inks. It's totally up to yourself. For me, pretty much all my armies had that little bit in there just to make it pop. Okay, so what we're going to do? 
same as before, we're just gonna do it straight in the airbrush. It's a little bit thinner. So same as before, we're gonna go with the Mephiston Red. Now, this is a different way, because that the paint is quite thick in the actual paint tub itself. If you're new to this, I would suggest doing this part in a yogurt pot or a little bowl, whatever you've got. Do this next part in that. Um, however, I'm not gonna to listen to my advice because I've done this so many times. I'm just gonna get a paintbrush, bit of paint. I'm gonna put my, cut, my airbrush to the side and I'm just gonna mix the paint on the side of the actual airbrush itself. And then what I'm looking for is that milky consistency. So if I got a bit of tissue, You see how it's just so it's not it's not like a glaze you can see how much it's absorbing into the actual tissue itself so next up what i'm going to do a little bit of red ink so i'm actually going to put three drops in there gonna make this light come alive right let's go for it so we're going to add a little bit of thinner so a little bit of a blowback And what we're going to do now, we're just going to go for the high, the high, the high points. Uh, imagine his arm, his face being. So same as before with the pre-shading, just going at that angle. Pull that red in, so that's gonna be dark, that's gonna be dark. Top of the gun. Always forget that part. Not today, sir. Right, any comments in the chat? Any questions? So next part on the side. So again, using that current input, you'll get used to where the paint's gonna go. So I'm just gonna get that in there. And we're just gonna get that along the bottom. Same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna get that along the bottom. And then just down there. Give it another coat over the top. I think that is. Actually, do you know what? I'm actually going to do in there as red as well. Gonna do that at the moment. I might change my mind a little bit later on. Um, actually, I'm already beginning to regret that, but never mind. We've commit, kind of committed at the moment. So we've got that part done. So we're just gonna clear out the brush, and get rid of all that excess paint. So at the moment, that's looking, it's looking shit, right? <laughs> it's looking absolutely shocking. But the next part is going to pull those colours in and it's going to actually start making it pop. As soon as we start putting the paint on the cloak, that will change this whole this whole thing. When you're airbrushing, what I normally like to do is get all the base colours down first of all. So before I do any of the highlights or anything like that, I like to get all the base colours down. Uh, so I may even paint the base, do the base, um, get all that in just so I can see where I'm going and see what colors pop. And if I need to go, you know, if I do more airbrushing and the paint goes on the on the base, I can go back over it. It's not, not the end of the world. One good thing about paint, one thing you've got to remember is 
it's only if you make a mistake it's only pain at the end of the day and you can go back over it and you can correct it so don't never panic like because you're doing it through an airbrush you're doing thin coats so it's not like you're going through a, with a paintbrush and you're putting loads and loads of layers on with an airbrush because you're, you're thinning down your paints it's just a thin layer so you can just go back over it which is cool right what we got in questions uh, so I'm sitting at the moment around about 22 psi At the beginning of the night, I was sitting on around about nearly 30, which is a bit high. And I'm not sure, again, I'm, I'm really not sure why I went so high. I can't remember what I was doing last to, to make me even go that high. Again, I've seen, like, I've been in loads of different groups and I hear, and people talk about the PSI and they do this PSI for this paint, this PSI for that paint. I just think, what, what, what are you talking about? Sticks to around about 20, 22. Pretty much all paint will go through that, that PSI. Unless you're painting t-shirts and then you go at a much higher PSI. But we're not painting t-shirts. Right, now for the next one. So this is the Vlajo Air Color. Now, Ace is crazy and he will actually blast this straight neat out the bottle into the brush. I'm not crazy. As I said at the beginning of the night, a bit thinner first, then the paint. As you can see, there's still, there's still quite a thick paint. And to blast that straight for your, for your airbrush, it would just be bonkers. So this again, a couple of drops of red ink into that. Just make that a little bit more vibrant. Because this is a nicer, darker colour, so when choosing your colours, I've gone to, so they're not too far apart from where they are, but you can clearly see the, the difference in the, in the shades. Do I need a bit more thinner? Maybe just a tad. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now we're gonna go for the shadow parts. So we're just gonna to go to the side. And to the side. Again, having the, getting the hang of the, the current in book, you'll get used to. So as I'm going up the side here, because I've been practicing on that, I've got the hang of now I know where my airbrush is going to go. So for instance, if I was going to go hold the airbrush back here, I'm going to cover all of it. Because I'm going to be going in closer, means I'm not going to be pulling the trigger back so much. So now, the type of lines that we, the sort of type of thing we're looking on the airbrush is nice, thin lines. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's go now into the shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that red, the darker red, just over the lighter red, just to pull those transitions in. So just like as in we did with this, we went dark and then we pulled the light into there, which is going to do the same effect here. So where we've got the lighter red earlier on and we've got the darker, which is going to pull that the darker one slightly into the lighter just to pull those transitions in. So then going straight underneath. And again, because we've gone, because it's nice and grey, um, a good example, the base is, we know it's already black. So if I do that red over that black, and then we do it over the white, 
you kind of got like a horrible I suppose it's alright, it, it depends on your taste, but I don't like that red. I want that red to be more, I want it to pop more. So having that the grey base on top makes that red stand out so much nicer. So it becomes like a nice red cherry bag. Let's get that straight in there. Now one thing I hate about Chaos, I've got so many bits that are blooming gold. It's kind of like the, it's one of those things, is if you like painting gold with the brush, great. Go with the base color red, first of all. If you hate that part and you prefer painting the panels red with a, with a normal brush, then go with the other way around. Have a wicked recipe for gold. But it just depends on whether or not you can be bothered to do this other part. I think sometimes it's easier just to do the gold recipe through the airbrush, so you get that nice smooth gold effect, and then go with the armor panel bits afterwards. Now, if I could have started this model over again, the only thing that is in like from scratch where it wasn't built, I would have had the coat, the head, and maybe some of the other parts separate, so I could get into all the parts that I need to get with the airbrush without having the overspray. overspray. Now granted, it's not, you can't always do that. So a lot of Forge World models, everything's already pre-built. And you kind of got to get around using masking tape, plasticine, other tricks you've got to hand to get around it. So I think we are. It's a little bit more underneath there. So already that red is really starting to stand out, it's really starting to pop. So we're going to get some dark red just underneath there. Okay, not really going to worry about its face at the moment. What I probably will do with the face, I'll probably go over with, um, do that by hand. Okay, we're just gonna let that let's get a little bit more now. It's gonna let that dry. Because we've got some of the paint starting to pull on certain parts, if I start putting more of the airbrush in, the air from the airbrush is just gonna start pushing that paint around and it's gonna go into places that we don't want it to be. So it's really important now, before we go any further, dry that off. Okay, because <clears throat> it is an airbrush paint and we put thinner in it, we need to just go over now with a couple more coats. As you can see there, the red is not, you still got the white coming underneath or the light gray. So it's not a nice even coat. So what we want to do now is just go over with another layer of red just to make that nice and smooth. We may even need to go over with, with, with two more coats. Let's see what this brings. Oh, I don't know. This might just be the coat we need. It's not the coat we wanted, but it's the coat that we need. anyway let's give that a dry I might go over a couple of bits all right let's just give that another uh, 
that be armour in that? No, I guess that would be all. I'm guessing that's cloth there as well. Actually, do you know what? I've got a little bit I've missed out on the armour here. So this is why I love that red. See how che that lovely cherry effect. I need to go back over with the with the Mephisto just there. Damn, this is such a lovely red. Any questions? What's everyone been working on at the moment? What's on the hobby desk? Okay. I think that is probably... That camera doesn't help at all. That looks so saturated. Like the red you see on camera to the red I can see down here is that red on camera makes it look a lot more vibrant, a lot more stronger. Um, it, don't get me wrong, it's a really lovely red as it is, but that makes it a little bit, looks like it's the red stronger than what it actually is. Just make sure we get all that shadow. Okay, so that is that fella so far. Okay, let's just go Oops. that excess paint as you can see look how much paint I'm gonna be chucking away it's a waste I didn't listen to my first rule at the beginning um, Necrons uh, Necrons but when the Forge world opens back up I'm picking up a Warhound Scout oh mate that would be friggin awesome so the the, uh, the products are using the cleaning so for the first part as you can see just there in that, that part it's just plain water and that is water and an old paintbrush and all I'm doing here is just getting out just digging out all the the paint with inside the actual barrel itself the next part of the cleaning process just get all the paint that's left inside just pull it out if I'm using GW paint Vallejo paint I'll use the Vallejo uh, cleaner. Then all I would do, that into the gun first of all. A little blowback, just so it gets in there. Make sure I give that a little clean around. As you see, you can see the paint inside. Pull that out, spray out all the excess the process so this time now I'm just going to go straight through the brush first of all flow back looks clear just to make sure I'm then going in with alcohol so it's the ibuprofen alcohol and it's like nine ten pounds not expensive at all and I find that, that alcohol is strong as a stronger cleaner than the Blasio. As you can see, now I've put that into it. See how much paint is still in, trapped inside the gun. Oh, we don't want that stuff going on your model. <laughs> you get that on your model, it's going to strip it. And then just for the final clean, before I pack up at the night, I'll be using that. And that really does clean out all the crap that's been stuck in your gun. Right, let's just give that uh, a little bit thinner. Thinner, spray that through first of all, just make sure I've got all the excess out. And then I'm gonna go a bit of paint into there, too much. Again, mixing your paint into your 
into the cup itself. I wouldn't recommend it. As I, um, sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I wouldn't recommend it. Use a yogurt pot. If you're not used to that, do it in the yogurt pot first of all and just then pour it in. Until you get used, to, you know, as time gets on, you get lazy. It's a bad habit to pick up. That's too thin. I'm just going to dry that off. And I also know what I forgot to put in. A little bit of ink. That, the Warhound Titan though, once you get out of that bad boy, make sure you post some pictures up once you got them painted. He's such an awesome model. I think it was last year or the year before we went to, um, me and Sean went to this Warhound uh, tournament in at Milton Keynes. Now I had my Warhound Titan, Sean had his Warhound Titan, I think he had a um, the bigger one as well, the, um, oh, what's it called, the Reva. Now we thought we were big boys going with that. We pull up, a uh, guy in a BMW pulls up, convertible, pulls out two suitcases, says, all right lads, walks in. We thought he was just staying at the night. He comes into the room, opens these two suitcases up and he's got friggin' three Warlord Titans in there, plus a couple of Reavers and a couple of Scouts. Man, did he make us feel small. Absolutely crazy. There you go, right. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to go back over the red that I've already done. If I go back over that and fist in red over the other colours, all that's going to do is it's not going to be, the red's not going to be as rich. We don't want that. We want that nice vibrant red. Cool, right, that's the red done on him. I don't think I've missed anything. I think I've got everything. Uh, I'm just gonna spray there just in case. It's meant to be part of his armor. Cool, I think that is where we wanna be. Right. Uh, at the time, we're not chucking away as much paint. Again, we've got that fun part of cleaning out the airbrush. Don't be lazy, don't forget to do it. Otherwise, that could cost you time. But as, as I said at the, at the beginning of the night, it happens, people make mistakes. Um, and you can, you know, don't feel that if you go to use it the next day and it's all clogged. Get yourself some of that that badger. Get yourself some of that. Spray it in there, and it really does break it up. So even though I think I've cleaned it up, there's still loads, still loads and loads of paint in there. Right, let's get that out. Right, what should we do for the cloak? What colours should we go? Should we go for leather or should we go for, um, okay, let's have a look what we got in comments. So comments, we've got, I uh, had one before, but I paint, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, brush painting on anything big, you just, I don't think you can get that, that same effect. It looks absolutely horrible. Uh, I went to one last year, Adepticon, saw a couple of Warlord Titans, 3,000, 30,000 points. Yeah, that's huge. Um, if you're on our Facebook page, if you go back a year or two years, you'll see there's a video been posted up on the setup. It was just frigging bonkers. The only downside when you play a game like that, it took so long to get the turns through. I think that whole day we only got like two, two three turns out of it. So three turns of shooting. Um, so it wasn't that that fun on that side, but the the sheer the sheer epic of the of the battle was friggin' awesome. Just seeing these massive great warlord titans, just so cool. It just it was so exciting just to see them all lined up, and it's just like wow. Now of course, if anyone was gonna make some money, that would been a great time to rob someone because there was so much money's worth in that room. It was just crazy. You probably got the same value as like a couple, like a small mansion. Right, what are we going to do next? So next up, we're going to go with 
let's go in with the cape. And I'm going to try to put my money where my mouth is and show you what I'm going to do next, how we're going to pull the cape out using the airbrush. So, before actually, before we go any further, nearly made a mistake, nearly, nearly made a mistake, and that could be a costly mistake. We're going to go in with some thin, uh, we're going to go in with some um, matte varnish. Nearly said matte ward then. So, matte varnish, bit of thinner first, matte varnish into the airbrush. blow back what we're going to do now we're just going to protect the paint of what we've done so far so once we put the the sticky stuff onto it that it's not going to pull that paint up so a couple of thin coats that will also pull the transitions in as well So let's let's get that up. We'll go for my strider off. So what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take a picture of this so far, so you get a. a I can't show it on the on the Facebook on the YouTube side. But what I do is I take a picture so far and I paste it up onto the Twisted Dice group. Um, and hopefully that will give you a sense of where we're at. All right. Uh, Just get that in. Hopefully that. Where are we? So that will be in the twisted dice. Oh, maybe put it into the wrong one. Now I've done that matte coat, that's actually pulled those colours in quite nicely, so it actually looks really nice on the top part. That's, that doesn't look great, but that's not going to be there. It's only going to be that, that there. That's all going to be gold. <clears throat> but I've got re say, really nice gold for that. So let's go with the cape next. So what we're going to do, clear the airbrush out again. Uh, nothing left in there, so... Matte varnish, matte gloss. As uh, when you're not using it, get it out your out out your paintbrush. If you leave it in there too long, it will it will clog it up very very quickly. Normally, what I do, I have the Badger Chrome, which does all my all my heavy all my heavy duty stuff. So stuff like what I'm doing now, I will tend to use the Badger Chrome. Um, I'm not saying it's a less of a brush. I'm not saying it's a rubbish brush. It's just, I just tend to find it's just there. Because I've got a bigger cup, I can get more of a thinner in there and I can just do more of a coverage. Normally when I'm painting, I would normally paint bulk. So I'd normally have like 30 odd Marines in one go, 30 odd Orcs in a go. Let's get a bit more thinner in there. Make sure we've got nothing trapped in there. Okay, we'll leave that sitting in there for a sec. Um, any questions on the process so far? Anything you want to see us cover? Oh, shit. Nearly broke it. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to get that around there like so.
So all we're doing there, we're just protecting the paint because the, I'm gonna be coming back in there quite close to the actual arm. You can't stop that overspray. So just like how we've done these parts here, we're just gonna mask it up to protect what we've already done. So hopefully you can see the process that I've done so far, the process that we've done so far with the practicing on the sheet, we're now pulling this over to here. So because we've got, we've got uh, exposure there, so we're gonna block that up. Um, we're gonna block that up. We're actually gonna go much to say we're going to block that up as well and leg the other thing you could use is um cling film that's another great great tool cheap as chips masking tape can be quite expensive uh if you do if you go to like a diy diy store don't get the the masking tape that you'd use to to um mask your walls the adhesive on it is very very sticky and it will, will, will pull your paint off if you find that this is starting to pull your paint off just stick it onto your t-shirt and then pull it off that'll take some of the stickiness off sometimes that could be quite a handy little tool if you are for instance what, what we've just done we've used the um the primer to do the model out of the um we haven't used an aerosol can we've used the this stuff, because we haven't left it 24 hours to harden, that could easily pull away. But I don't care, I'm a rebel. <laughs> yeah, right. Cool, right, so that's all the masking we're gonna do. Let's pull that up. Hopefully, this is gonna look sweet. Right, cape, right, any suggestions? What are we gonna do with the cape? What colors do we wanna do? Because we have got, shall we go, um, we'll go, I'll tell you what, we'll go leather underneath. I've got a nice color recipe we can do for that. Top we'll go, what looks nice with red. Don't want to do blue. Uh, Let's have a look. What inspiration can we use? Oh, so masking itself, use the tape. Um, I'm glad you said that. In a sec, what we're going to do, we're going to paint this bit first of all underneath, and I'll show you what I'm going to use for the next part. So we're just going to do this top part, and then we're going to mask that off, and then I'll show you what I'd use for the, um, for the top part, hopefully. So let's do, do that part. So let's get airbrush back. So all we're gonna do is just gonna get the white paint. Let's get that in there like so. To where it needs to be. God, I put too much paint in that again. Let's look at that. Right, 
Uh, what should we do with the what colour should we do the top? Okay, that's pretty cool, Dave. Should we go with um, what colour was his coat? This guy meant to be. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what inspiration we can have. Uh, what should we go with? Let's have a look. What have we got to work with? Who has got a nice cloth to work with? Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Tell you what, let's go. I'm gonna try purple. And the purples we're gonna use Um, purples we're gonna go with are gonna be. Mm. Oh, see, so this is the part I hate. It's deciding on colours. Um, the purples we're gonna go with. Ah, I know what we're gonna go with. Decided. for choice here. There's so many friggin' lovely colours. Um, what do I go for? Ah, sorry, we'll try it. Now this is either going to look really, really cool or it's going to look dog shit. <laughs> Let's work this one out. Let's see what we go with. space really what we want because we've got a nice dark red underneath we really want a nice brighter color on top so i'm tempted i'm tempted to go with um squid pink and we're going to go with one of the scale colors now scale colors are friggin a nightmare when it comes to well that look a bit pants Nah, no, I can't do that. That look horrible. That would absolutely look shocking. Um, I think we're gonna have to go down the route of the blues. I think I'm gonna have no choice. So, yeah, let's do it. He is world eaters, of course. So, let's go with French blue. And we'll go with that one. We'll go with. Blue ink. Okay, so the colours we're going to go with for the Coke. Um, I'm going to go with a nice French blue. Then we're going to go with um, night blue for the shadow. And then we're going to go with the ink tress again to add in to make that vibrancy, make it pop. And of course I left the paint in there. Brilliant. Let's get that out. That's crucial, so sorry. Uh, see if we've got any comments. Oh, that would be Nagraf Knight into Xenos Purple. Do you know what? I might. Let's have a look.
that might actually be a nicer. I'm gonna go with your. I'm gonna go with your. This. I'm gonna go with your choice on that. I think yours would actually be a bit of a nicer, nicer option, right? So, because I've left that paint to dry in the the airbrush for too long. Need to give it a little bit of a deep clean. You can see where that paint's in there, sticking that badger stuff in there. You can see all the the chemicals reacting and it's starting to pull that paint off the actual airbrush itself. Let's just give that a little pull back. I'm not gonna let that So it's magic. Okay. All right, let's do this. So let's go in with the, let's go in with the Xenos purple first of all. Um, so let's go a little bit thinner, a little bit thinner. Let's get my brush. And we're just gonna go in with a tad, tad of ink, not too much. Um, have a little bit more thinner. Yes, it is nice and dark. Okay. Cool, right. So of course, it's going to be our highlight color. exactly the same as we're doing the Zenith highlighting and now we've done the red we're just gonna hit right let's let that dry cheat speed the process up I can't believe Ace doesn't use a hairdryer. excess paint we don't need to go too much because we're going to be going in with a darker purple any questions at all was everyone everyone all good Please feel free to drop some comments down. Join the conversation. Okay, so we're gonna go in with the, the Nagraph. Gonna 
Okay, and we're just going to add a little bit more ink dress in there. Just a tad. And then let's clean that brush up a little bit. All right. To make sure that's nice and dry. And again with this one we're just going we're just repeating the same thing but just going the opposite way so we're now aiming for the shadows do just to pull those colors in I'm going to go over the glaze um, which we're going to go with contrast and we're going to use what we're we going to use let's have a look at the mate uh, that might not be the right one uh, I think that'll be too dark um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I think this might be a bit too dark for what we want to do. Yeah, that will kill it. Uh, and then what's the other one? What is our alternative choice? We've got, did I not pick it up? that disappear too i just had ah oh, there you go yeah we're gonna go we're gonna try that let's get rid of that excess let's clean it up how many people are still hobbying how many people have got the opportunity to do um, get games in? I'm absolutely itching to get Gazgo on the tabletop and give him a try and just see how he plays out. He's all painted up, he's looking sweet, tabletop ready, and I just haven't had that opportunity to have um, have a little go with him yet. He's such an awesome model. Really enjoy painting him. Hello mate, you alright? When you go lay down. For those who can't see, I've got a little worm. Um, the little dogs come over to come say hello. Probably like you talking to you weirdo. Right. Still got paint in there. Still got it in there. Right, I should. This is the part that drives you potty. I don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but I've got someone <laughs> singing outside on the top of their lungs. Okay. So thinner. Now with this, because we want to make this a glaze, I'm just going to go a little bit of the contrast. A little bit more. I 
if you can see that on camera. I think just a little bit more. Let's get right in the bottom. Get all that paint off. Don't think I need any more than that. Yeah, perfect. Cool, right. Give a blowback, get that final mix. Lovely, right. Let's pull. What this will do is just help pull those colors in. Dry that up a little bit. Let's give that a tad more. So with this part, I'm not worrying about the Zenith highlight inside and this, it's just pulled both colors in. So I'm just going all over it. But I don't wanna to go too much that I lose then the, the highlight and the shadow in. Okay, right. Um, thinking about it, I should have done this the rough way. What I should have done is done the um, the bottom part, then use the then use the uh, masking. So the liquid mask is one of the questions that was asked earlier on, and I use and it vanished out of there. So for the liquid mask, I'd use mask all. Now this stuff th does dry very, very quickly. You can do some really, really cool dam uh, battle effects, damage effects, rust effects on armor, if you apply that right correctly. Um, it's, it's what I've kind of done with the with the knight. So what you do with that is get an old, put it on a, on a plate, cloth, and then all you do is get an old sponge Dapple it on, and you just dapple it onto the model. Like, um, same as like if you was going to do like chipping effects and stuff like that. You let it dry. You then do all your base colors over the top of it. So, miss a step there. At the beginning, you do all your awesome rust effect colors all over the model you want to do. Then you dapple that on to the parts you want that coming up. Spray the model up. Do all the so reprime it. Then go back over with all your all your colors, all your nice colors, and then afterwards after the model's uh, dry you just then go over with a toothbrush and then you just pull all that off and then all the rust effects will come come straight up and it's quite nice it is really really nice nice way of doing it but it can it can also be a it's a bit of a trick to that as well um right let's just do a little bit more drying on him Right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to do, we're going to use that mask all, and we're going to do that on this part. It'd have been easier to do it the other way around, but it is what it is. There's no point crying over spilt milk. Um, I need to just protect that that layer we've just done, so a little bit thinner, and then what questions we got? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Nope, no games yet. Just looking forward to being able to soon. Yep, I'm really looking forward to fill my freshly painted 30K Empress children. Oh, mate, 
put some pictures please up on the twisted dice group love seeing other people's work and yeah show me what you've got on that emperor's children and the 40k side of things are going to be hot very very soon as soon as that war of the spider happens i can imagine them being really really hot blood angels and necrons yep the old classic double double team uh, okay no um no is the answer to that with the with that you can't i've never done i've never to be fair i've never tried it i don't think you can but saying that what i will do i will have a go at i'll get some test mo uh, mock-ups from um test models and have a little play and see whether it'll work i don't think it will but we can definitely see whether the the mask will actually work with water or thinner but with that you can't put it through the airbrush you have to stipple that on with a with a normal brush obviously it will just absolutely kill kill your equipment i can't imagine it doing the airbrush doing it any good whatsoever i reckon that'd absolutely freaking kill it i do apologize if i'm not as quick on the responses on the on the chat normally what i would have on the mac i would have the my ogato running this this session and then i could have the youtube up on the side and i can see your conversation on the actual screen itself but unfortunately i'm having to rely upon the phone and every second the phone's going into standby even that's having a little hissy fit tonight right let's get the protection field on good shout on the purple that's really nice that's beautiful on there i reckon with that red that's going to make that i reckon that's going to make that really really pop and it's going to look stunning against the it's going to look stunning against the gold okay i think that's well protected so excess thinner the excess um matte varnish straight back in the pot again doesn't matter if the thinner's in with that you're going to thin it down anyway so it makes no difference whatsoever so what we got on the chat um If you go on the Facebook page, just type in Twisted Dice, you'll see you'll see our, our, our Facebook group itself. Um, if you could look like that page, that would help us out as well. Uh, with that, you'll get, if we're gonna do any more of these painting guides, or anything like that on YouTube, we, we post a lot off on there. On the Twisted Dice, on the page, unfortunately, no one seems, other than ourselves, are only ones that can post on it. It's, there's no section on there that I can find where I can get the community to add their pictures on it. But we've got a group, there's two Twisted Dice groups, there's actually three. We've got a buy and sell site, which is really designed for the, for the local area, the local Leighton Buzzard area, Milton Keynes. Um, we run, I run a gaming club on a Monday night down the British Legion. Not, of course, with the, with the lockdown, that's not happening. Um, just to keep the Twisted Dice Leighton Buzzard Gaming Club free of all the buy and sell stuff. Um, we just set a separate group up so people can just put what they've got to sell on there. And all the guys in the group are pretty cool, safe and sound. We know you're not going to get bumped, if that makes sense. Um, but then we've got the Twisted Dice Latent Buzzard Gaming Group, which is, that is solely for the um, the gaming club on the Monday night. Of course, we've got loads, you know, if you're more than welcome to join in there, a lot of the cool guys in the area, they show loads of those cool pictures up and all their work. Um, we've got Blood Bowl. As soon as we go back, we've got an awesome Blood Bowl going up, a campaign going to be going on. So that'd be really awesome to get involved in that. Um, but then we've just got the Twisted Dice group, and that is the and that is the one that you want to be in. So let me just pull that up on the thing. Uh, oh, approved. So that's if you can see. Um, let's just type that in. So so you've got Twisted Dice. That's the that's the local gaming area. So if you're living around Leighton Buzzard or Milton Keynes or Luton area, fancy game on a Monday night, come join into that one. Dead simple. Just um, all you've got to do is pop your name down. Say you're after the game, we'll, we'll sort the rest out. Uh, and then if you're into Blood Bowl, there's a Blood Bowl group for that. And then you've got the Twisted Dice group. And that's the one that you want to share all your pictures on. So anything cool you want to share, please do. That'd be awesome. 
But again, if you've done any of this tonight, with the especially with the colouring in on the side, it'd be really awesome to you know again share some of your stuff. It'd be really awesome to see. Um, right, let's do the next part. So let's just dry what we just done off. Yeah, it was a really good shout with that purple. That's a that's a beautiful purple. Let's come up nicely. Right, let's go mask off the next bit. So for the big bit, we're gonna mask off with tape. And then let's just do a bit of clean up. And then we want an old, old scruffy brush. Uh, what do we want, what do we want? Where are you? Can't even find it now. I had a perfect brush for this. Now, unfortunately, this does. Once your brush is, uh, once you use this stuff, it's pretty much game over your with your brush unless you clean it out. But you've got to be really, really quick cleaning it. Otherwise, it really does kill it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. I think I used my last yogurt part. Uh, I would have to use that instead. Okay. This stuff. Uh, tell you what I could use. Better still, cotton buds. So when working with this, what I would suggest, just take out what you need out of the pot and then just put it onto a plate. If you leave that open, it will start setting inside and you don't want that. So all we're going to do... With that, we're just gonna pop that. I don't think that's gonna work. I think we're just about to mess it up. Um, I need. I think that'll do it. Okay, old brush. And then we're just gonna go As you can see there, I'm just popping it on. That's not. Yeah, it's starting to, unfortunately, that's, I think that's coming more to the end of its days. That's starting to be a bit too thick. When you get that fresh, it's nice and runny and it just slides down nice and easy. At the moment, that's not. The trick is with this, you, once, you st once it starts drying, it will peel. So you want to kind of get it down before it starts drying. Otherwise, it will just peel back off, and it's a real, it's a real pain in the ass if you've uh, part of a language. If you've just gone over, masked everything all up, and then you just dapple that last bit on, and then it pulls up what you've just done off. You kind of uh, make you scream. So as you can see there, just pulling that last down. On the pot, it tells you to let it dry for 30 minutes. Uh, of course, we ain't got 30 minutes. And we're going to use the hairdryer to speed things up again. So we're just going to get underneath there. And of course, that's just then pulled that up. Again, you can use blue tack, plasticine. Actually, I wouldn't use plasticine. Plasticine is probably a, a bad shout. Um, 
you could use green stuff world actually has um, some cool stuff it's like this black putty that you put down you can just reuse it over and over again it's, that's actually really cool stuff i actually got some but i haven't actually I can't remember the last time I used it, so all right, I'm just gonna put a big dollop there. I think I even started putting it off there. Oh no, 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 no. Don't you dare. Okay, cool. All right, let's clear that. Let's see if that comes off. It's not. See, that's the only problem with that. Once it gets into the bristles, it just kind of ruins it. I suppose you could use like um well they used to use in, used to use it at school to push the PVA glue around. But get like a thin one of those. I've used those before. Like um I can't think what they're blooming called. Well I do have, on the Twisted Dice Facebook group and the page I put up some tools that I use for it. So all I'm gonna do is speed this process up, just gonna hair dryer it. Okay, now it's starting to dry. You can start seeing it going opaque. If that was a fresh air batch, that would be a lot thinner on there, only because that's already starting to go gooky inside. To be fair, I think I've had that quite a few years, so that's starting to dry up inside, which is not good. Um, but that would go opaque and you would see through, and it's really hard to see whether or not you've actually put it on. But that being thick, you can see that's clearly covered up. Um, so what we're going to do here, we're going to go with a lever, a, uh, a nice lever effect. So we're going to go with, hmm, mm -mm -mm -mm. I might go Tusk Fur. Uh, or do we actually want to go with a nice dark brown moon faint? What have we got? What have we got to play with? I suppose that, that, and. Nope, that's not the right red, but that's the nice brown to finish off with. Um, nope, I need. That even might just be the final. That's not what you want to see on camera. Be old fat neck. Um. Hmm. I think a nice dark red would be a nice good shout. Right, what have we got in chat? Um Yeah, run oxide hide would be a good shout. So we got um we do have a Discord chat. The Discord chat is is only for the patrons. Um that's the only thing we've got for the uh, for the Discord chat. Um, but the, for the for the patrons, you can join up for as little as a dollar. Um, but you get also get access to all the all the early access to all the um, battle reports. Anything we've got coming up early, you get they get access to it. And again, we've got some really cool guys on there, some really awesome fellas. Uh, right, let's go with Rockside Hide, and we'll go Moonfang. I might regret the moon thing. So with this one, because the moon, the rock side is going to be dark anyway. Uh, we're going to do some zenith highlighting on this, but we're going to leave that. We're not going to worry about going back that purple with the um, with the grey. We're just going to leave that as purple because that's uh, quite a dark colour anyway. Once we go over the base colour on that, it ain't going to make no difference. You're not really going to benefit putting that back grey. 
Hopefully that makes sense. Right, let's have a look. Um, how long did it take you to get your Facebook account back up? And do you know how you got it hacked? It's a real pain in the butt when that happens. All right, uh, Zenith highlight. Oh, what have I just put in there? It's shocking when you forget what bloody um, what finny you put in there. Put it down to age. Right. Wow, that has got a bit of a delay on that, on the chat to the conversation. Here we go. So let's go. Jesus. So they managed to hack anything else or was it just your Facebook? I've had friends in the past have had their Facebook account um, hacked in. Because they're numpties, they had the same password for everything else. So of course they had all their um, all their details hacked. So like I had the um, PayPal hacked into, and they lost a few quid on that, which was kind of their own fault really. But it was um, one of these links. They um, oh, what am I doing? Kind of forgetting the shadow pattern there. It's like one of these games that it's one that someone uh, linked them onto on, on Facebook, and um, they'd clicked onto it. Oh no, no, it wasn't. It was a uh, there's someone had sent them a message saying that they've seen you on a video. I think that's what he said. He's clicked onto it. Nothing happened. I asked him to log his details in. He's then logged his details in. Next morning, waking up, he'd similar to yourself. He'd, uh, loads of his friends have been messaged. With that same thing, oh, I've just seen you in a video. Blah 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 blah. I saw it and I was like, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't sound legit at all. I just sent a message, been hacked, and then he um, got back to me a couple of days later. And said, yeah, he's been hacked, and his PayPal had been done. Easily done though. But these scammers, they're they're getting smarter and smarter. The um, had one from the TV licensing the other day saying that I, owed, I was in debt and I hadn't paid my TV license and they're going to send the bailiffs around. I was like, yeah, right, okay. Direct debit, mate. <laughs> it comes out, direct debit. And then I had one two weeks later because I didn't reply back to that saying I was in, I was in credit for £157. Click here. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Now you just confirmed it's a scam. Then I had one today from Netflix. Little do they know, I get my next fix free. <laughs> so I don't owe Netflix nothing. So I get it through my work. Give them 10 out of 10 for trying though, right? Okay, that's the airbrush clean. So we're going to go in with Moonfang first. And then same little trick. 
before, so we're going to go right to there, like so. I think that's a bit too watery. It's a little bit more. And the reason why I say it's a bit too watery, when I put it down there, you can see how o opaque it is. I just need a little, little bit more. Not much. It's better. And this kind of comes with a little over time. Oh, really? That's a bit strange. Right. Here we go. So Moonfang Brown, first of all, so we're going to hit the highlighted areas, first of all. If anything, it's probably a bit too, too watery. The reason why I say it's a bit too watery, if you can just see just there, you can just see where it's just starting to spill, uh, spill over a little bit. moment that's looking really really bright but once we put the the dry bar and uh, not the dry bar rock side in there that'll darken it up all right let's get the air hair dryer on it yeah to be fair i should have really gone in there with um maybe a little bit thicker on the um So where's everyone all from? Thank you. Um, yeah, that'd be awesome if you could. I'd really appreciate it. Gonna give it another coat over the, the highlighted areas. And then Ah, oh, it's really bugged me about the gator not working tonight. Could have had some music playing. One, it's just that nice move, that nice move coat. I think we're there, right. Uh, I had no inks with that, so I could just put that straight in there. Yeah, mate, that's, it happens all the time. You put a bit more paint in it, it gets too thick. <laughs> Thin it down a bit. I do like Games Workshop paints through the airbrush. I hear so many people bitch about it, but I actually like them. They're not too bad at all. Um, but I also like the range of the Vallejo. It just seems so many more richer colours. Germany, oh, awesome. How are you? How's Germany doing with the coronavirus at the moment? As you can tell with the bad hairdo, we ain't got the hairdressers yet. I think it's going to be a while before we get that back. Oh, 
Oh, near Bath. Oh, awesome. Is that the same down in Bath as well? With the um, obviously, I know the lockdowns everywhere where we are. Um, but is it bad down where you are? Being near Luton, uh, all the areas that are deprived, it's um, not been great. Unfortunately, with the lockdown, I'm, uh, the job I do, I'm still working. I'm not going into customers' homes, but I am going around them. And I'll tell you what, some of the people near me are just... Um, some of the customers have been going to have just been so silly and taking risks. It's just crazy. Oh, yeah, just come in. It'd be all right. I haven't got nothing. Liar. <laughs> You're coughing your guts up, man. Um, GW, though, through the airbrush. You sinner. <laughs> Mate, yeah, I, I love it. I love the, uh, I love them through the airbrush. I've been knocked for it many times. But do you know what? It's a hard habit to uh, break. Right, let's see. Yeah, I think that's nice. Ah, oh, Essex. Nice little area, Essex. No, right. <laughs> right, here we go. Let's see how this pulls off. Let's get that up into the areas. Yep, that's starting to spider. Oh, I thought I had that. I thought I had that nicely. Um, don't want to put any ink in there. Yeah, I do, solid. Let's go for it. Let's make that nice rich brown. Oh really? Jesus. Um, to be fair, the that grey is not too bad through the airbrush. I've used that with my um I've used it with my Gene Stealer Colt with the tanks and it actually come through quite nice. But it does it, it does dry on the airbrush quite quick, which is a pain. Oh, you clogs, haven't you? Just goes to show when the last time I used this. Uh, we're working on... Not that you can see them. It's the... Um, it's one of the corn, one of the corn um, leaders you got out of Age of Sigma, and I've just stuck a plasma pistol, took his um, doggy off him, and then put a plasma pistol on him. It's one I've had sat in the cover for ages and never actually um, painted them up. And because I needed something to demonstrate on the the Zenith highlighting, it was just a great opportunity to get this guy painted. Plus, he's going to look awesome. Uh, what we got so. Uh, how's your army coming on Carl you got a nice little conversion coming on can't wait for the new rules for bile bile is going to be absolutely awesome yeah um, I think when, when I done that when I used that grey yeah I went from what did I use for base I think I went with Mechanis, Mechanicus standard grey and then build it up for, up to that and then with the um, white air afterwards and then just finished it off with Tamiya white um, lovely oh wow well, sorry <laughs> pulling it away from the camera you don't need to see it <laughs> you get in that little habit
Don't you dare. That one down to there, light there. And then let's just get into the dark parts. I think that is that done on that. Right, cool. I think we are where we need to be on the cape. And then let's get that into there like so. I've got, um, thanks to one of our patrons, uh, uh, John Otto, he was an absolute freaking legend. The guy, he's over in the States, he's got a couple of boxes of the um, Prophet of the Wolf. Mate, are so lucky, because obviously lockdown, GW not sending anything out. America had them all, a lot of countries had the box sets because their GW set them out pre in advance. He um, had a couple of copies of the of that, so he sent me out Gasgol, Makari, and Ragnar. Didn't didn't ask for anything for it. Just sent it out to support the channel. I thought that's friggin' awesome of him. I was well impressed. Just well chuffed with that. So I've got obviously Gasgol. If you haven't seen already, Gasgol's painted, um, but Ragnar's is. I, I want to do a painting video for Ragnar. I'm gonna do him the same colour as I did my um, space walls, but at the moment it's just trying to get. Um, I've got a cut of moth tomorrow, and then I'm in for two, three days, and then I've got two days off. So what I do those two days off? I'm gonna take the advantage and paint him up. Such a awesome looking model as well. I love that pose. But what I want to do is um, dynamic pose between Gasgo and him as a proper nice fight scene. I think that's so, so cool. We've got in the thing, that brown looks good. Yeah, it's it's really popped. Plus with the with the red and the purple, I think it will it'll help break that model up a little bit, which would be really cool. I think actually going with the um, purples, I think that was a good shout. I think that was a much better shout than what I was going to do. Um, what we got? Let's go in with that. Let's clean that airbrush out a little bit. Right. Oh. Stinks. Right, let's have a look. So what we got? I do apologise if my head's going down. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've got the phone. Right, let's have the moment of truth, the great unreveal. Actually, do you know what? No. Did that all come off? And just, yeah, it did. Fair enough. Oh, shit. Try keep it uh, swear free. Apologise. Does that brown go with the with the purple? That's the only problem now. Don't think it does. I think probably gone a bit too garish with the um, with the brown. No worries, no dramas. Uh, what I can probably do. So airbrush wise, that's probably now where I'd probably stop with the airbrush. I've got all my base colors down. Now, what you could do, um, if you want to take this like a little bit further and go, I'm gonna show you actually. So I think this is a really, really cool, cool thing. So say for instance, we want to pick out that part just there. And what you could do, put a bit of masking tape on just behind the curve. Uh, let's get the airbrush back and let's go with, uh, 
Uh, what do we want to go with? Yeah, I think what I might go with is go with the... Um, what do we want to go with? Uh, ba -ba -ba Screaming pink would probably make it a little bit too much. Uh, what did we finish off with was the... Uh, was that one, wasn't it? Xenos purple, purple. Um, I think we're going with the. Um, oh, where's the West Dakar? No, that's just gonna. Chestnut red. Um, that would probably be a better. Let's have a look. What, are you talking upon the purple or talking upon the brown? Uh, I'll tell you what I could do. Let's have a look actually on. Uh, da -da -da. And then let's go with just add a bit of that into that. That might work. Yeah. Now to be fair, this is probably where I would go in with the paintbrush to pull them in. But I wanna show a little trick. This is probably where I balls the whole thing up. Uh, so we're going to go a bit of Rat Wazdaka. Bit of Wazdaka, a bit of the Xenos Purple. And of course, I just terminated the purple. Oh, look, that's far too much, but. So look, let's have a gander. So with that bit of masking tape just down there. Just gonna go for the edges. And then what that allows me to do, allows me to catch the highlights. I think if anything, that's probably... Yeah, it's not. Yeah, not quite. It's not quite doing it. Unfortunately on that, that's kind of... I don't know how well that's coming out on camera for you guys. Thing. probably what I'm going to do is I'm just going to redo the um, the bottom part because the purple's fine I think it's just the brown I've got the brown wrong it's not the right brown I think that's probably that's my problem uh, right I think now oh shit 
balls. Don't want to do that. Let's just clean this paintbrush up a bit. Yeah, I th I th yeah, I think I was a bit brave trying to go with the um, with the brown on the on the bottom part. Um, the brown really doesn't go with the rest of the model kind of that's the part that I messed up with it is what it is yeah I suppose um maybe the blues would have been better Let me put some gold on it. I'm gonna just have a little play with the gold, see where we go, and I can see where the other other bits look. So, gold. Uh, let's just do a little clean up of the that. This gold is banging. It's an old, old gold. I don't know if, how many people use this. Um, the old liquid gold. At one point, I used to, use, used to bum the hell out of it and just use it on everything. Uh, as time got on, it started not working well for me and started falling onto other things. But it's kind of like that. I kind of got the love back for it and it's kind of working again for me. Oh, where's all my pots? Um, Demon Hyde, where's that? Yeah, that could, that could work. Right, let's have a gander. So, let me just do this gold festival, Carl. Let's just see where this list takes me. And let's have a little clean out with that. Cool, right. Right, let's have it a go. It's a little bit of that. Uh, so if you can just see there. And then I'm just gonna put, crazy as it sounds, I'm gonna put a little bit of that alcohol in with that. I'm gonna be so bloody careful with that because it does strip paint. And then that. Good. Make that pop. Yeah, let's go back over that anyway. No worries. I love that gold. That gold is so friggin' awesome. I don't know why I stopped. The um, the Vallejo metallic golds are really nice as well. Uh, the the metals are really nice. The gold can be really really hit and miss depending on what you're doing it on. Oh, you idiot. 
How did I mess that up? going back in there anyway so don't matter if I do it mess up anymore just give that a nice rich gold this be uh, there's a YouTube channel called um, by painted and it's because of him he used to love this gold and just use it on pretty much everything. But he always used to make this gold look spot on on everything he'd done. I don't know why he stopped his channel because he was actually a really good painter. Like really, really good painter, but he just, just stopped doing stuff, which was a shame. This is the bit where it's going to be. This is the bit we don't want to. Oh, did he? But you know, the, you, yeah. It's a shame because he, as I said, he was um, he was a really good, really, really good painter. But he's still getting loads and loads of views even now. Like, even though he doesn't, he hasn't put anything on for ages. His, his channel's still doing very, very well, even without him. I think he'd done a lot of commission work, though, didn't he? It's just popping nice. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Oh, his mate, his standard was just yeah, really, really nice. I think the last time was the last video I saw of his was he'd gone into one of the games workshops where he near where he lived. And um, he posted it up on on YouTube, and I think that was I think that was probably the last time I saw of anything of of him. Oh no, he put another one on that. She's saying um, he was changing over, uh, changing um, the type of stuff he'd done, but I didn't actually realise it was because he wasn't making. He'd changed his job full stop. But I think that's probably back in the early days when people weren't really doing. Um, painting guides and stuff like that for YouTube. But give him credit, at least he gave it a try. That's a big old step to make that full time. Scary step. That uncertainty. Always loved his Mephiston he done. That model was banging. It was such a such an awesome crisp job that he done. Um, let's get that gold in there. You messed that up, I'll be screwing. We'll do that bone, that bone, we'll do that gold. And then let's do. I have to change brush. 
that's starting to, that's not gonna do what I need it to do. It, yeah, his his Dark Angels was nice. He had done a really nice um, Tyranid colour scheme as well, which I liked. When do you reckon your squats will be done? Yeah, that's it. Awesome, smooth, soothing voice as well. <laughs> I suppose when you're painting, if you're doing commission work and you start painting your own, it's kind of like, Busman's holiday, isn't it? Oh, I just realised where I missed a spot with the airbrush. That was silly. Never mind. I have to go over the brush for that. And then let's get that in there. Like so, and then sorry, I've got to say when I'm when I'm using this paint, I'm just taking the excess paint off first. So I don't know if you can see as I'm doing that, just rolling off the excess paint onto onto the side. This does dry very very quickly, and what we don't want is a little blodge effect. Oh, I'd be glad to have him on the tabletop, this fella. Leave my world eaters into battle. Bet you're reaching for a game in your car. Right, now I think that is pretty much where I should stop. Right. You see he's coming on. That goal's just helping it start to pop. Don't get me wrong, there's still loads and loads still got to do on him like, uh got to pick out the bone face at, at the moment the way it's been so like until we get that the other parts done it's still going to look pretty messy um let's clean do you know what i can't get on with that game it's um it doesn't do me any, um, I just, yeah, I just don't enjoy it. I prefer, I prefer to get on with the, with an actual proper, proper game. It's been ages since we've done a battle report. I've had loads of offers, but my missus will freak out if I have, um, if I have anyone around to do a battle report. Not only that, you're just taking too many risks. There's no point taking unnecessary risks at the moment. And then let's just get that into there like so. So all I'm doing is going in with the Blasio uh, Gunmay Gretel. A Gren, gun, I can't even say it. 
gun grey metal. And that's it. Let's just finish up those parts, that part there. Of course, we can do some really awesome glow effects with the airbrush as well. But I think my time is probably going to be, it's going to run out tonight and that'll be another project to come back and I'll finish him off another night. Um, yeah, but ov overall, apart from messing up on the cape, Hopefully you get the drift or gist of um, where we're trying to go with that. Wow, nearly 11 o'clock. So, I guess really, I think that's where I'm going to have to call it for the night, unfortunately, because I've got work in the morning. Any questions at all? What we'll do, we'll finish this, this, this guy off. Um, I'll set up another date on the calendar where I finish off. So if you want to carry on joining us in, me finishing off this guide that'd be absolutely awesome uh the next painting guide uh is probably going to be john's uh hive tyrant which he's going to be doing it's going to be coming out very very soon so he's going to talk through how he, he's not that one's not live it's pre-recorded and he talks through how he does his pinstripes on his tyranids he's got some really really awesome uh tyranids he's done really really well with those painting competitions he's got to know retreat with them as well so they are absolutely stunning we've got Painting wise, for myself, what have I got coming up next? Makari is probably going to be next. Um, mind you, I've started painting, but not nowhere near finished him. And then Ragnar is probably going to be the next one. Go for that. And then I think the next one like this, the next Saturday night, I'll probably go through Rust Effects. I'll see if I can get up with some more of this stuff, and I'll go through a couple of different different ways on that. I'll have a little think about it, see what I'm going to come up with on that. Um, may even just finish off this fella because um, he's starting to come yeah it'd be a shame to like start him and not finish him off or even might even do him in the week that'd be cool anyway that's what i'm going to call it anyone got any questions at all if you have done any of these techniques that i've shown tonight um please do drop some pictures up on the twisted dice facebook group that'd be really really awesome to see um if any of this has helped. If you found it helpful, again, drop some comments down. That'd be really, really cool as well. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us out massively. And again, if you can help us up to getting towards that 10,000 sub mark, it'd be really, really appreciate it. Or if you can share any of our content, that'd be absolutely grand. Um, what else we got? Nothing in the thing. Yeah, I suppose like the tabletop simulator, you can hold the dice, I suppose, and then fling it up on there. That's what's cool. And I think... I haven't... Nope, still streaming. I don't know if I've dropped off or not. So if you are on there still, I'm not sure, because the, unfortunately, the timer only lets you stream for so long before it cuts you off. Uh, I don't know if I'm still streaming. No, but it looks like I've lost my internet. I don't know if I'm still. Nope, I think I'm still there. Think I'm still there. I'm not. Anyway, listen, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, thank you very much to everyone that's joined us tonight. Really do appreciate you guys and girls. It's been absolutely friggin' awesome. Uh, thank you very much for everyone that's uh, donated some uh, cash to the stream tonight. I didn't do it for that, but that's really, really cool. I really do appreciate it. It's absolutely freaking awesome. Hopefully, I'll catch you all again on the next one. Uh, so I'll pop some, pop some details up on the, on the community page on the YouTube channel, and I'll also put it up on our Twisted Dice page and our group as well when the next one's going to be. So thanks again, and hopefully I'll catch you all very, very soon. Thanks for watching.